Let's start this. So welcome back. We're gonna continue working on the game. And as you can see in the title, um, we're finally gonna move past this um, this UI and we're gonna implement something uh, something better. Something that, that's gonna look a little, yeah, it's gonna look way better than this. And after that, we're gonna continue to work on uh, on the infinite levels, and we're actually gonna implement them in the game. So um, let me show you what we've done uh, last time with the infinite levels, so you have an idea of what we're gonna work on. And uh, actually, I've, I've worked some more on this um, after after the stream. I mean, I pretty I I wrote it better than it was uh, last time. So we've done this, which doesn't look like much, um, but what this is, um, you have, let me see. So this is the data, the, the input data that you give to the, to the, uh, to the algorithm and uh, the data are those, uh, actually let, let me make this uh, a little bit bigger. Here you go. So this red line here, uh, those are the the, the points uh, or the or the data that's plotted on the on the graph on the graph, and the uh, the blue line uh, is uh, the extrapolated data that we got from uh, from from this line. So that's what I that what we've worked on uh, last time, and I've actually gone a bit further and improved this um, after the stream. And I made a new version. So this is, a, yeah, the, the, the I, yeah, the, the code looks a little bit be, uh, a little bit better now. And what we have now is, okay. So uh, let me see where is the data here. Uh, wait, 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 here. Okay, so we have the data. We have we see the the plot for for this data here, and then we can click on this button to. To get more data, and I've added some uh, some sliders here to to change the scale of the of the graph to, to easily see what's happening, and also we can uh, uh, reposition it. But the idea is the same. We have the we have the data, and then uh, uh, based on the on the initial data, we extrapolate the values, and we get this. Uh, this curve. So using what we've done or what I've done here, um, yeah, we're gonna try to implement this in the game and we're gonna do some uh, interesting uh, UI views for displaying this kind of curve in the editor for debugging purposes. But until we do that, we're gonna have to do, or or we're gonna work on uh, on two other things. So first, uh, I noticed a bug um, last time after the after the stream. Yeah, I'll leave. Um, so let's try to to reproduce it, and then we're gonna try to to fix it. Okay, so we play the game. The enemies are spawning. That's that's okay. We should have um, four enemies. So there's one, there's two. Yeah, there are four enemies, three here, and the other one is here, which which is correct. Oh, I got the meta. I didn't have I had to unpause it and not play again. Anyway, there are four enemies, and that it, that that's okay. Uh, the, what the problem is, is, yeah, uh, the, the cooldown is not, it's not over, but we already have, um, enemies spawning again for some reason. So I have to see why that is. Yeah. So this is what we're, what we're going to work on. We're going to. We're gonna debug the code to see why, why this is happening. I already see something here, so so this might be the key to it. But um, yeah.
did before cooldown. So this is the wave manager? Okay. So who's listening to this? Level manager. Why is the level manager listening to this? It is not complete and the current wave is more than the... Oh, basically this is like the, the index of the wave is more than number of waves this can be simplified uh, we can remove this equal and then remove this right yeah but anyway okay so for the cooldown we say okay so this level is complete so we complete it Who's listening to this? This is listening to this. The list level, uh, the level list manager. Then this says this should be set up next level. Wait, but this shouldn't be like this. When a level, when a level is finished, we shouldn't move to the next level immediately. That's not how it should be. So actually, this is not correct. Okay, okay, I think I found the bug. Uh, if all the waves in the level are complete, then we'll have this, we have this, this button here, this uh, go to next level button. And when you press this button, you are going to, to the next level. That's how it should work. Um, so yeah, this is not correct actually. I think this is the problem. Actually, let's uh, let's just do it like this. Or no, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Let's see if this fixes it. Also, right now we don't have this, uh, so you, you, we we actually don't support going to to the next level. It's not uh, it's not yet working because we have to make the the tower expand, and we don't really have that hooked up. I mean, it works. We have the code for it, but it's not yet hooked up. Okay, okay. so yeah, now uh, the enemies are not uh, are not spawning anymore. So the cooldown is done and now it's spawning they're spawning again. Okay. Now it works. Now it works okay. So that was the problem. This I'm gonna keep this method though. Uh because we're gonna use it in um from the UI, most probably. I mean, right now it's private, but uh, we're gonna make it public, most probably. And we're gonna use it from the UI. Or actually, I don't think I'm gonna use it from the UI directly, but with an event or something. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep it for now. But as I said, uh, right now we we don't have this uh, functionality functionality done uh, for continuing to the next level. But we fixed the bug, so that's uh, that's that's awesome. So let me stop the timer and commit this change. Okay. So now we can move on to to the UI. Yeah. 
so now I'm wondering if, he, if we should, I think we're gonna, um, okay, so let me start the, the timer on this. I think we're gonna put the UI in a separate scene, just so we separate the, yeah, I, just so we can take out the, the game objects from, from this, the, this scene, which is just a, a testing scene that I've made. Uh, but first, we have to import a, an asset that I've bought, uh, and not from here, but from the package manager. They should make it so it opens the project manager. Actually, yeah, no, I get it. Okay, so I don't remember what it's called, but it has GUI in the name. Yeah, this one. Let's download and import this. And let's see if it works. I haven't tested it, so I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, it should work, but I haven't tested it yet. I hate it when, when the the assets are not in the in the in the plugins folder. Okay, let's see. Uh, I I think they have some demo scenes. Yeah, no scene preview. Uh, yeah, I don't want this. I'm not sure if I want that. The the scene preview. Not sure what that is. I think those are the, yeah, I'm going to check them out. I think I'm going to remove them though, uh, but uh, I have to be sure what, what those are. So, okay. So we don't care about those, I guess. Um, I don't know what those are. But I think that's it. Okay, so this is, so so yeah, I don't want the, the, the demo scene and I don't want, I probably don't want the, the scene preview. But we're gonna import them for now. And we're gonna see what's happen what's gonna happen. Okay. Oh, I thought about something. I wonder if the, the package uh, uses uh, text mesh pro or if it uses the, the default text. Uh, component I mean you can make it use text mesh pro easily but uh, yeah I should have done this um, before the stream maybe I don't know how long it's gonna take there were quite uh, quite a lot of images there so what we'll see oh it's actually done cool okay let's check that out let's see what the scene preview yeah, yeah, I thought about, yeah, so th those are the images from, I basically get an idea of what, uh, what, what, what's contained in the, the package. So yeah, I don't want this. So I'm going to just delete the whole folder because I don't care about that. I might uh, import it in a separate folder. Uh, or a separate project and look at them if I want to, but uh, I don't want I don't want them in the in the actual project because it's gonna take space that I uh, I mean in the yeah it's gonna take space that I don't want to pay for for uh, on uh, Unity collab I mean and what are those? Those are, oh yeah, oh nice, nice. So they do have um, 
they they are using uh, TextMesh Pro. That is awesome. Looks like they have some uh, or a couple of um, um, points as well. So this should be should, this should be fine. Okay, so let's start with uh, creating a scene. So let's make scene here. Let's call it game UI. We're gonna drag it in here. Uh, we're gonna remove everything from this. Uh, we're probably gonna move the event system, I think. Yeah, I think we're gonna move it. Um, yeah. Let's move the event system. And let's see, what do we have here? So we're gonna have health, we're gonna have coins. We're gonna have, a, uh, well, we're gonna have quite, quite a couple of buttons and stuff. Um, hmm. And I, I, I've seen a bit of, of what this, uh, this uh, asset contains. So I'm thinking how we should do it. But I think I have an idea of how, how to do this. Um, Let's see, we're gonna close that and Let's see some preview. No, I can't uh, because those are that's unfortunate. Um, I might have to remove this as well because it looks like it's for the demo, uh, demo scene. Um, actually, I can't look at anything. Oh, also, they don't have, um, I thought they had prefabs for, um, well, let's make this 2D. I thought they had prefabs for, uh, for each button, but, uh, I guess uh, we can make the buttons ourselves. We we have the textures, so we just have to see how they are. Uh, yeah, so they're just sliced, and that's it. Maybe this is uh, something that we look into. Looks like it's the same everywhere. Uh, let's um, hmm. let's make a preset out of this. Um, I don't want to select, but I want to create a preset. Uh, folder here. Okay, so I made a preset, but um, I don't want to modify it a bit. I'm not sure. I haven't used presets. Oh, here we go. I want to add preset. Or Oh, that's nice, I guess. But that's not what I wanted. Uh, I actually want to change something on the preset. Um, can I change this? I guess I can. Or can I uh, select another? Uh, I can't. Let me just select none. Yeah, I know I have to have a graphic there. Uh, not a, actually, no, let's just keep it as a button and then we're gonna see what's what's gonna happen. Yeah, no, we're gonna keep it like this. Maybe I should have used uh, another color, but whatever, it uh, doesn't matter. Uh, let's see what we have here. Okay, so we have some yeah colorful buttons. We have this, uh, so I'm probably gonna use the, those buttons. Uh, um, for the normal and fast speed, this uh, this circular button. So let's see how this is made. Um, yeah, also a simple button. Oh, I see. This is oh my bad. Okay, okay. So we need the this is only the button. Uh, the the image separate. Okay, my bad. Yeah, that's why I was not finding anything to put here. Uh, so yeah, no, yeah, that totally makes sense. I'm gonna uh, set this to none. Yeah. Let's save this. 
uh, and let's get back to our circular buttons. Yeah. Can I make it so it doesn't exclude property? Yeah, that's what I want. That's exactly what I want. And maybe this. Because I don't want to apply this um, on the button by default. Oh, damn, that's nice. I haven't used the presets before, so this is actually interesting. This might come in handy. I might start to use them more. But yeah, that's nice. We have the, we're going to have the cooldown, we're going to have those buttons, I don't know. We're probably going to use something else for those, maybe something like this. On the on the bottom of the screen, yeah, we're going to, we'll have to see. Um, oh, we actually do have those prefabs. My bad, we actually do have them. Oh, so I was just looking at this and uh, yeah, my bad. Okay, so we actually do have those. Okay, uh, I'm uh, I'm wondering about the icon. Let's see. Okay, so we have a, a shit ton of icons here to, to choose from. I probably don't have uh, um, we're not gonna have uh, or find exact uh, uh, what do you call them um, icons for for our weapons, but uh, we're just we're just gonna add something. Okay, we have a couple of uh, a couple of icons that uh, that might come in useful for the game. Okay, but uh, getting back to this. Um, okay, let's try to make this uh, this UI, I guess. Uh, let's make a canvas. Uh, let's see, UI. I want a canvas, uh, but I want it here, please. Uh, let's make this the default scene. Um, uh, a set active scene, that's it. Okay, so we have the canvas. We're gonna scale it with the screen. We're gonna make it for this resolution. Uh, and we're gonna match it with the height. Yeah. Save this. Okay. Okay, so let's start with the with the two buttons. Okay, let's no, actually let's start. Let's see how we can how we do this. How we're gonna do this. Um, let's make an empty one. Um, let's call this bottom bar. We're gonna align it to the bottom center. Or actually, we're gonna do it like this. Yeah, we're going to do it like this. Left, right, whatever. Uh, let's go to 2D and let's remove the... Yeah, like so. Now this is better. Um, um, I think I want the anchor here. Or what if I set it to zero? Okay, so that's outside of the screen, so this should be to at zero. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's that's the one. Okay, so now we can add let's add buttons. So let's add one button. Uh let's um it like this let's put it at zero zero this should be uh no this should be at zero um yeah uh, we're just gonna do it like this 
this is the height that we want apparently 142 actually a bit more than 142 uh this might be 150 more than 150 let's put it at 160 yeah this looks fine um we don't care about the width um i want some space here though so let's try uh, so let's try 20 pixels this button is a bit big though so i might scale it let's try 0.75 Okay, that's a bit better. Now we probably can have this height here, even less apparently. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, what should this be? So we have laser and projectile. So let's start with laser and let's move it a, a bit left. Um, so let's see minus one hundred. Let's duplicate it and. Let's call this projectile and let's put this at plus one, 100. Let's change the text. Uh, let's uh, actually, no, this should be fine. Laser projectile and let's change the icons. Let's try to find something. Uh, item icon. Uh, there were some arrows, uh, not arrows, but um, yeah, this. Let's try using this. And for projectile, let's use the you know, something like a, like a bow or the icon. Uh, this. Oh, so arrow or arrows. Yeah, let's let's do it like this. Okay, so that's way, way better now. Let's try to actually add the, the functionality as well as we as we add those. So um, let's see. Uh, let's get to the old canvas and see what those uh, what those have here. Can I copy this? Looks like I can. So I copy the laser click event. So let's paste this. There we go. This is the same for the projectile. Copy and paste. So now theoretically we can change between. Uh, let's get this here. Let's lock it. Let's play the game. There we go. We can change between the uh, selected weapons. This is awesome. And now we can actually disable those. So we get rid of the old uh, the old buttons after we add the new ones. Okay, so we have the button bar. That's awesome. Let's do the health next, maybe. Yeah, let's try to do the health. So we're gonna have a top bar, I guess. And it's gonna have it's gonna be similar. Um, yeah, this might be at one. Uh, this might be at zero. Oh no, this should be at one. This should be at zero. Yeah. And let's put it at 20 as well. The height, let's copy the height from here. So 130, let's put 130 here as well. And let's see what we're gonna put on the top bar. So I know for sure that I want the health of the tower. And let's see where we can find that. Um, maybe it's in slider. Not sure. Yeah. Yeah, something like this probably, or or something like this. Not sure. Or make it a central thing. Hmm. Actually, not sure. Uh, what's this close? Um. Either icon type three, icon type three. What's this? Basic. Okay. 
let's duplicate this. Um, I want this. Let's see. I'm not sure how this is made. So, um, so this is not what I want. I mean, it's part of what I want. Front frame text value frame icon. Okay, so I don't want to move this. I want to move all of those, and I can't move them. Let's add an empty here. Um, bar. Uh, let's make it fill the whole space like so. And let's parent them here and let's move this now. Uh, let's do it like this. This should be at one, this should be okay. So that's at zero. So now I can, yeah, maybe something like this. But I'm actually I'm not entirely sure that I that I actually like it like like it is. And I haven't opened the god damn it. I've modified the Well it's good that I have the I've made a I made a copy. Yeah, I actually don't like it. Let's look uh, back at this. Let's see what else we what else we have here. I might just make a, a, a bar up top. So I was thinking about the the thing here and thinking that I might uh, put the the level. But then again, we have both the level and the wave, so we might have to do something else there. So I might I might try to put this uh, this type of bar there. Let's see, what is this called? Edge deco type. And it would be this one. Uh, this card changes. Yeah. Or actually this one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, put this at one. Wait. Why is it like this? Because this should be at minus 20, not 20. Yep, like this. So then this should be. Uh, Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we have this. We're gonna make this. Um, we're gonna make the fill color red, but not this intense red. Maybe like this kind of red. And then we'll have to hook this up to the to the health. Uh, we'll have to make a script for this, but uh, that's not a problem. Okay. One thing that I see, and uh, I oh, so this doesn't use an image, or or or, or it is a, or no, it uses a um, oh yeah, okay, so I need. Do I have a pixel? 
I haven't made a pixel yet. Um, because I don't have a sprite, I can't actually uh, do this thing. Or not this. Um, wait, what is this? Oh, this is for the frame. My bad. Uh, so I want... But no, this is the... No, this is not what I want. Wait. Wait, I'm confused. Is that only on sprites? Wait. Wait a second. I don't get this. Um, let's choose something random. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. So I want field. Yep, that's what I want. But then again, I can use the... Or I can't, wait. What's the... What's the width of this element? Oh, I see how it is. My bad. Okay, so it uses something that I don't know. Um, there we go, okay. So it uses this. Let's undo some things here and... Get it back. Okay, so this is the... The default state. So okay. So I'm so I'm using this to drive the. I didn't know they had the slider component here. Okay. Okay. So now this does make sense. So I'm using this to drive the the amount. Cool. 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 Okay. So uh, yeah, we'll have to make a script for this, and um, yeah. Yeah, but this should be fine. Let's make a, a um, wait. Where should we make this? I think we should make an. Uh, let's make a folder here called UI. Uh, we have to make runtime. Uh, let's change the the song real quick. Let's choose a um, a super or a mix or something. But what should we choose? Uh, definitely not that one. Ah, uh, this sounds fun. No, this one. This one. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, so let's create the script here. Um, I think this is the, that's right, uh, that's the, yeah, that's the uh, namespace we're using. So this has to be a mono behavior. Uh, we're gonna have two int variables, which is value or amount. And Max amount. Uh, let's make those uh, serialized fields. And um, awake. Uh, register listener. Um, Something like this. So this is on awake and on destroy we're gonna unregister. Okay. And one other thing that we need is the actual uh, reference to the slider. This one. Either. The value is amount 
divided by max amount not value. And yeah, those are in or actually are they? Oh, I think the the health is in float, right? The health might be a float. Uh, but let's see. Um, yeah, those are floats. My bad. Okay, now it's now it's fine. Let's make this an expression body. Cool. And now we can attach this to the slider. Come on. Actually, not yet. Uh, let's copy this. Let's show this in Unity. And let's create an assembly ref uh, definition. Or a reference to the to this assembly definition. Oh, no. Actually, this should be... My bad. This should be the editor. I uh, got it wrong. Uh, this should uh, this should not be runtime, but uh, but the editor. Oh no, no, I'm stupid. No, this is runtime. What the hell am I thinking about? No, this is this is runtime. What the heck? Yeah, my bad. Come on, you compile. You can do it. Yep. Okay. Uh, the slider is this slider, and let's see. Tower health and tower max health. Let's put uh, this at 0 0.5 by default. And let's play the game. Awesome. We have full health. Oh my god, why the hell do we have this? Okay, I don't know why this is uh, so dark, but there we go. We, we're taking damage, and this so this works, which is awesome. So now we can get rid of the health indicator. Cool. Now let's see what else. What else? We have the coins. Let's do the coins. Um, I've seen some things. Uh, Let's see where we can find them. Uh, not sure if they're in labels. They probably they're in labels. No, they're not. Okay, so then I have no idea where to find them. Frames, maybe? Uh, definitely not this. I know what I'm looking for. I don't know what uh, or where did they put them. But also frames doesn't really make sense for what I'm looking for, but uh, we'll see. And those are some nice looking graphics. Um, where the hell are those things? Were they in sliders? They don't, doesn't make sense to have them in sliders. Or does it? No. Um, what the hell? Are they not in labels? Oh, damn. We might use this for the level. Um, am I getting crazy? Am I... Was that from another... Uh... Oh, we have more stuff? We didn't... I haven't seen this. There we go. The, that's what I was looking for. Those things. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Also, this bar is uh, like the whole thing. Yeah, so I guess we can um, remake those. 
uh, by ourselves because I guess we have everything we need in frames. Yeah, we have this. Okay, so I guess we can make this ourselves. Uh, let's see. Frame basic, uh, basic hexagon. Yeah. Damn, this looks nice. Might actually use this for the for the weapons. Hmm. Yeah, I'll see. For now, for now, those buttons are okay. Um, okay, so basic frame. This the hexagon. Uh, but which one? Uh, hexagon. This. Yeah. Okay. So let's get back here and let's make. Let's rename this. Let's call this health. Uh, tower health. Uh, if I can spell it. Okay, so this is a top bar. Hmm, should we add the coins uh, under this? I'm, I think I, I think I'm not gonna do that. I think I'm gonna reserve the space for some for something else here. Yeah. I put them. Uh... Should I put them on the side? No, let's put it underneath. Let's see how it looks underneath. Uh, we're gonna ha also we're gonna have two frames actually. Um, so which one was it? Was it this one? No, it was the other one, the demo, right? Um, but it's just uh, but yeah, no, yeah, that's that's one. We're gonna use this. No, no, no. Or no, let's use the white. The white one. Um. And then we can change the color, but it doesn't make. Nah. Ah, oh, come on, no. no. Let's just use that demo. I, it's tripping me out because it says demo on the at the end, and the white one is better because we can change the color to whatever we want. But but it's the same for the demo one as well, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. So I want to pivot there. I want this to be like something like this. I mean, it has to be way, way, way smaller. But um, let's say 150 with, let's change the height. Uh, should we change the height? I think we might have to. Um, let's put one minus 50 here. Minus 80. Minus 100. Yeah. Let's put 30 pixels, minus 30 pixels here. Too much. 20 pixels. Maybe. I kind of already don't like this, uh, but we'll see. Yeah, I might put them on the side. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Let's do it like this. Um, Let's see what the anchors are. So this should be at one. That it's at zero. It's okay. Uh, what? Oh, I I was zoomed out. Never mind. Let's put that this at zero. Let's make this three hundred. And now let's add those icons. So where would I find those icons now? What are those icons? Where would I find them? Um, let's go back to this uh, demo stuff and let's uh, try to find those icons. Where can we find those icons? Actually, I, I might just copy this from here. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to copy this and just paste it in here. There we go. And we're going to just arrange it a bit. Uh, so we might put it like this. We might do this. This. No, actually, let's put it like this. Uh, zero. Let's put this at 20. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Oh, I changed the, the height of this, right? No, I didn't. But it looks so much better here. Actually, it looks the same. Only those other ones are outside of the. I don't know why it looks better here than here. 
might just be me. Because those, uh, because of the corners, maybe. How is this made? No, I want, um, Oh. There's some fancy things in here that I, that I have no idea how to use. Well, I may have to use this. Um, let's see. This? No, it is sliced. That looks different. Something's different. Something's different for sure. From from my thing to to their thing. Offline info background zero. So what's this then? Top status background zero. Okay, I want to use this. This looks way better. A now oh, those are some really corners there. Um, let's add some padding to the top bar. Let's put a 20 there and a 20 here. Yeah, that's better. Let's say, uh, where's the text? Zero, we have zero coins. And now, um, oh, actually, I can hook this to the, I mean, I could do it like that, I guess. yeah, no, but that doesn't make any sense to hook it through the uh, localization package. No, let's do it, uh, let's make, let's make a, uh, a class for this. So slider controller text. Well, then again, we have to transform action now. Now, yeah, let's do it to the localization package. Um, let's see. Let's put it here. No, let's put it on the text. Um, Localize string event. That's the one. Update string. This. Um, let me just text in here. And let's see what do I want from here. So I want game UI and I want coins. And that's everything. Except that I want to change those uh, those things in here. So instead of having coins at the front. We're only going to have this. Let's save this. And now when we play, there we go. We have the coins written there. Let's uh, disable the, the, the coins indicator. And now we have coins. That's pretty. Uh, but there's something annoying here because those are not aligned. So let's see what we can do about this. So, yeah, let's see how much something like this, only two pixels. That's it. Okay. I'm okay with that. Um, okay. But this, this kind of looks so big. Yeah, this might look better. Um, those are not yet in the game, or they're not hooked up yet, but um, we're gonna add them. Uh, we're gonna add them anyway. Uh, so this would be 70, 80, 90? Minus 90? Uh, that's a bit too much. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's better. Um, let's align this again, actually. 
now it's more. I have to to get this done by. Something around here, so it would be like 10.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.5. Now let's put it back. And yeah, whatever, that looks fine there. Let's change the icon. Um, This is a hammer, something like this, maybe. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use that hammer. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, let's try those. Or maybe this. Yeah, let's use this. Put the icon. That looks shitty. And this looks big. Uh, let's see what uh, what's the width of this. So 64, or actually no, the uh, no the width. Let's go with the width. So icon. Let's say we want to preserve aspect ratio, and this is 64. Yeah, that looks fine. Yep. Okay. Uh, and let's remove the. Oh no, we actually don't have it. Never mind. Uh, no, it's on the text. Yeah, let's remove this. Or let's just disable it. Or put none. Keep it, yeah. Okay. Let's play. Nice. Now we need the cooldown. Um, we need the speed of the game. Uh, I might just I might move them uh, those I might move them uh, on the left. I think, or hmm, where should I put them? I like this. Might use it for the cooldown. Yeah, I think we're gonna use that for the cooldown. Okay, uh, let's duplicate this. Or no, let's duplicate this one. Uh, let's change this a bit. Um, this is the pivot. Let's put it at zero. Let's put this at zero. Let's change the icon. Um, coins. Uh, this is pull down. Where where did I see that? It's above those. Yeah, hourglass. That's the one. Icon. Hourglass. Um. Let's move the old UI a bit down. So those, this, 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 and this. Okay, let's just put it there. Uh, I don't like how the hourglass looks. Let's uh, do this. 
increase of aspect ratio and 64. Yeah, that's nice. And on the text, let's change the, what's this hooked up to? Um, so this should be hooked up to the wave cooldown. Let's remove the cooldown from the start of the thing. Like so. And then we can add a uh, circular button uh, next to this. Uh, let's find those buttons. Let's see where those are. Um, rectangular circle. Those are the ones. So maybe let's do a something like this. So that would be great. Yeah. Let's add. Let's just keep it simple. Let's add a uh, two. Uh, circle buttons. Uh, we're gonna make uh, make it pretty uh, some other time. Um, yeah, let's do it like this. Uh, let's put a zero here and a one here. Zero, zero. Something like this. We're gonna change the the icon. So this, uh, let's say that this is a normal speed. Let's duplicate this and make this fast speed. And let's move this a bit to the right. Something like this. Uh, maybe a bit too much. Uh, Yeah, that's that's fine for now. And let's change those icons. Um, I haven't seen. Icons for speed or uh, something similar. Oh, we have some arrows here. Okay, we can use that arrow for normal speed, but I would put the double arrow or something. I mean, I can make it myself. That's not a problem. But first, let's see if there are uh, icons already for this. And they might not have it. Damn, there are so many icons. And there's, mm, I don't see yet the icon that I need <laughs> for the icons. Oh, okay. Oh, there are more. My bad. Damn, this is perfect. This is perfect, actually. Um. Where is it? Here. So I want to use the rewind one, except, yeah, except that I'm gonna rotate it. So I'm gonna rotate it on Z, I think, 180. Yeah. And then for the normal, I'm gonna use the play one, like so. This is a bit big though, so I'm gonna actually do point five. Too much. Six. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's hook those up. Let's see. Um Speed, copy, paste, and fast speed, copy, and paste. So let's uh, hide those two. Let's also hide the wave cooldown. Uh, we still have to add the skip cooldown button. Um, 
Let's see. Hmm, what should we put that? Can I move those buttons from here? Or, I don't know, put them underneath, maybe? Uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, let's add a let's add a button. Um, let's see what kind of button should we add. I mean something like this. Um, maybe a gray one or a dark one. I might a, I might add a gray one. So that would be rectangle gray. It would be this one. Yeah. Add it. Uh, on. Where is it? Where are you? There we go. Uh, let's change the pivot. Uh, this would be zero. This would be one. Zero. Zero. Um, it is way too huge. Something like this. Um and we have the go to the next level button and the wave uh but to be honest i don't think i'm gonna so go to the next level i don't think i'm gonna uh, do it right now because i haven't done the i mean it doesn't actually work right now it just turns uh i mean gets interactable when you finish the level but it doesn't actually do anything like you see right here so, so i'm not gonna do it right now and the wave i'm just gonna plop it down underneath here somehow so let's see um maybe something like this or i don't know What is this? Uh, label flag blue. I mean, I'm gonna change the color. Um, I wish they had a. Uh, damn. I wish they had a. Uh, um, a, a white one. I mean, I can. Also, I can make it myself, but uh, let's do it. No, one. This is the. Let's open it. The white one. Let's go to this. Let's duplicate this. Join Explorer. We have a ah, there we go. Let's fire up Photoshop and change this. But actually, I think I have um, I have the PSD files for those, right? Ah, oh, but it's a Unity package. I don't want to. I'm not gonna import this. And now that I think about it, I think I'm gonna also remove it. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna remove this. 
actually let's let's just do it like so god damn it i can't go back there um where was that sprites component uh label and the white one this one okay let's add a uh, black and white filter there we go now we can do whatever we want with it theoretically um i might just make it a little bit more brighter let's try something like this let's save it uh no i don't want to save it as a psd but actually no i i do want to save it as a psd why not yeah save it as a psd and then i can just remove this save this go back to unity and then i have a psd file here um let's copy those uh one I have to make a preset. I don't want to make a preset. Is there anything special to this? No. There's going to be a sprite. 100. Uh, is it? Uh, apply, sure. Yeah, it is tight. Um, remove matte. Yes. Transparency is transparency. Blah, blah, blah. Apply. Let's use it. Nice. So now. I can make it whatever color I want. I mean, I don't have a plan on what color I should use, but uh, now I can do whatever I want. <laughs> no, let's just keep it white for now. Let's change the color of this text to, I don't know, this, whatever. But the idea now is that I can add it here. So, um, let's see where are those labels. Here we go. Let's put it here. Um, wave. Uh, top center. Um, there's a one in here. Zero, zero. Something like this. And I think I'm gonna, let's see. Um, let's get this. I wanna color pick. Yeah. It looks like shit. Let's try this. No, this looks like shit. Let's try this. Also looks like shit. Let's try this. It's getting uh, even more shit here. Um, fine let's keep it like this and then we're gonna um for the color we're gonna choose i don't know amazing amazing of course i wanted unity to crash oh my god oh my god when was the last time i saved that scene damn it god damn it you stupid unity fucking hell man no, I don't want to just just die. I don't want to report your bug. Fuck off. Oh my god. Fucking hell. I'm not sure when I last saved that scene. I hope I don't have to remake a lot of stuff. Fucking color picker, man. Jesus. One. Oh my god. Oh, never mind. The, the scene is not loaded. Ooh. I thought there was like nothing. But uh, the, the scene is not loaded. Come on. Come on. Come on. The moment of truth. God damn it. There are so many that I have to add back. Stupid. Okay, let's do this again. Jesus Christ. Uh, let's start with the, the last one that we did for 
wanted to do. Um, prefabs. This one. Uh, let's see. Pivot. That's good. This is. This should be one. Zero zero. Oh, it looks good at zero zero. What the heck, man? Let's go down a bit. Uh, we're what the fuck? Okay, so we're not gonna use the color picker anymore because this is broken. No, I'm not gonna send you my project. It's huge. Oh. Okay, while this is loading, I'm gonna go to the kitchen. Okay, okay so we're not gonna use the color, I mean, I I'm gonna use the color picker a lot, but uh, from, um, I'm gonna take a screenshot of the of the screen and then use the color picker from Photoshop. So let's zoom in on this and take a screenshot. On. There we go. Now we can use that. Let's make those stupid buttons again and UI stuff. Man, that's so shitty. I think this is the first time I used uh um the color picker. The color picker. I don't think I've ever used it. And I don't think I'm gonna use it ever again. What was I doing? Uh yeah, prefabs, label and the white one, please. A third time is the charm. Uh, pivot one zero zero. Put down. Let's see what color this is. This, whatever this is, I want it. Awesome. It looks like shit. Uh, let's get this color. No, let's try this color. Sure. Whatever. Um, text, please. Okay. Yeah, let's keep it like this. Okay, so this is the wave. Um, one thing I want to change. Um, where is it? Here. I want to remove the semicolon from this. Uh, sure. Like this. Nice. Okay, let's save this. Okay, so we have the wave. Um, let's remove it. I said I wasn't gonna do this. Uh, oh yeah, also the wave cooldown. Yeah, we've done that. This I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do right now, and the wave is done. So we only need the skip cooldown button and those two. 
Um, I might do it like like they did. Like they put a button here. Let's see how they how they done how they've done those uh, those buttons. Um, I think it was in the demo UI. Yeah, this one. So they have a plus, but I'm gonna do something else. Uh, let's just copy this because why not? And um, cool down and just plop it in here. And of course, it's somewhere. Um, Uh, actually no, like this, and this should be yeah, it is at one. Okay, so we have a plus here. I don't want a plus. I want. I don't know what I want. Um. I forgot if if we had this. Um, I want like the the reload sign or something. Or maybe I can use the the rewind icon again. Yeah, let's try this one. What the hell? Where's my icon? Okay, there we go. Let's make this button uh, do stuff. Uh, so let's keep cooldown. Let's copy this and pull up in here. Oh, I see how they've done it. That's so stupid. Um, but I guess that works. Let's, actually, yeah, no, it, it does make sense. Let's just jump here as well, so so they don't have to um, load another icon. Okay. So we have cooldown. Let's save this. Uh, skip cooldown. Get rid of this, and then now we only need those two buttons back for um, uh, for the speed. Let's see how we how we're gonna do this. I don't think I'm gonna do, or, or actually I'm gonna, I, I might do the that uh, round button again. Uh, should I do the gray one? Actually, the gray one I think I've done. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna use the 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 the, uh, the, the circular button again, but I'm not gonna do two of them. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do one of them, and just uh, or actually make two of them, but. Um, uh, put them uh, one on top of the other and switch between them, depending on uh, 
depending on the speed of the game. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see how do we want to do this. Uh, let's make an empty actually. So let's call it game speed. Let's um, get the the width and the height from the actual button. Um, let's put this like so. Um, I want zero on x, one on y. Let's put it somewhere. Let's add this. Now this is gonna take all the space. This looks bigger than it should, right? No, oh, 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 it has the same size, never mind. I thought it looked bigger for some reason. It looks bigger, right? No, it has the same size, I don't know. Looks, looks huge. Okay. Okay, so normal speed would be this. Um, let's duplicate this. Let's make this fast speed. Now let's change those icons. Um, thankfully, I know what I what I'm searching for. So I want. Oh no, not this one. My bad. Uh, the icon in, uh, in the interior. So I want to rewind. Actually, I wanted to rewind for fast, not for that. Never mind. Uh, this. I want to rotate it, but by 180. It looks like shit. It looks better. Uh, let's uh, do this. And this should be play. Uh, play, play. This. Or let's try and narrow. Be let's try with this. Yeah, that's wrong. This is what I wanted. No, oh, let's just play. If the if the icon is bigger, it looks better um, with a curved back. But uh, but in this case, no, it doesn't. It doesn't look. Good. Oh, we had a forward button. I should use that actually instead of rotating it. That's it. Um, let's see if we can make this uh, bigger. Oh, uh, I only want the icon to be bigger. Yeah. Let's try with point seven. Yeah, that works, I guess. Good. And now we have to make the logic for controlling this button. 
Uh, actually, but first uh, I want to. Yeah, let's rescale this to 0.5. Let's move it. Um, like this, maybe? I don't know. Uh, actually, let's add the... The behavior to the buttons and then we're gonna make that switch uh, happen save this um, uh, not manage uh, mono behavior Wait a minute. Private, um, no, private game object, um, normal button, normal speed button, fast speed button, serialize this, serialize this, and Private void, no, public. Public void. Update. Actually, um, if I made it so I can hook up to this, um, if not, maybe I should. Uh, there is no event that I could hook on to, uh, but I should totally do that. So let's see. Public uh, event action. Yeah, action. No, just action. Um, system action. I don't even need this. Or how do I want to do this? I mean, I can make a set speed. But that's so ugly. No, 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 no. Private game speed speed.
my bad. Let's put this at the top here. Let's remove this because it's not needed. And let's remove this. Uh, we're going to keep it with a public, uh, with the private set. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Okay. So now I can use this here. Um, well, I need a reference to this. And yeah, actually, I need this. Because here I want to know what's the speed. Um, Like this, and this can be private. And let's do some cleaning here uh, in the reset function. Let's uh, go to a statement body and let's make this null just in case someone didn't, uh, you know. Okay, so now let's assign this. Game speed buttons. I see that. Uh, let's add a okay. normal button, fast button, and one other thing actually that I want to do is. Let's do it on awake just so we can get this uh actually let's switch them. Let's do on awake. We hook on awake, we update on start and then on destroy we remove. Let's try it. I'm clicking, but nothing happens. Why? I mean, maybe it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, of course it doesn't work. Um, no, actually, this has to be reversed. 
for now. So right now, uh, what's happening, the normal button sets the game to normal. I'll, I'll have to change those. The, fa the fast one sets it to normal. So they so they they toggle basically. So yeah, there we go. So now it switches between the buttons. I should make that look be look better. But let's see how. Let's go to, what would that be? Managers? Yeah, this one. So we cool down this. Um, Actually, not floor clean, just floor. Because uh, I still need it as a float in there. So now this should only have the. Come on. Yep, it, uh, it only has the. This as an int. And then we can click on this. Or not. Yeah, apparently, that's disabled. Um, or something. Why can't I click on this? Oh, I haven't set it up. I'm stupid. Okay, uh, where is that? Skip cooldown, copy, paste. Let's try it again. I still can't click on this. What the hell is going on? Oh, what's this doing? Wave manager. And now we get to a problem that I thought we're gonna get into. Um, actually, we can we can keep doing this for now. Yeah, so, the, so so I'm trying to access an object that it's in another scene, so that we we can't have references between scenes. Uh, but what we can do is have an event. And that's actually simple to to set up. So let's see, where do we put that in the objects? Here, no, settings, game, UI here. Create uh, ESF um, event on oh no skip cooldown. So we made an event. When we click on the button, uh, we're gonna trigger this event, and then uh, what was this hooked up to? Oh, the wave manager. So let's go to the wave manager, which is this one. And here, uh, let's add a ESF event listener. We're going to listen to this event. And when this event is triggered, um, we're going to skip the cooldown. Save this. And now when we play, OK, let him do its thing here. So now I have this, now I can click on this, and there we go. The timer reset, and now we have enemies again. 
let's see this uh, this wave go up. Yay. We still have coins. The coins update when I construct weapons. Uh, let's test that I can change the weapon type. Let let's let's get me some more coins because uh, I can test with uh, so few coins. Let's see. Uh, let's give me 100 coins by default. Okay, so this is projectile and it works. And let's add the laser here. Yep, as you can see, the, the laser is smaller, but uh, this should do quite more damage than uh, than the projectile. There we go. Nice, we're getting money. We are getting money. Let's put more projectiles. And another laser. And another projectile. I well, uh, actually nothing's gonna pass uh, this first laser, but uh, that laser is too powerful. Nice. Uh, let's uh, get to wave 10 and see how this uh, label changes. Let's see if it has enough space with two characters there. Let's put this on fast forward. It's fine. Cool. So I guess this is the, the UI done. For now at least. I think this took more than an hour. Mm. An hour and forty minutes. Um yeah, almost double the time that I that I thought it's gonna take. But this looks awesome, so uh, it's worth it. What's this? God damn it, those, I should remove those. Uh, yeah, so let's remove this. That's doing that. Let's check this. That. Okay. Uh, let's omit this and let's get to the next task. This might take a bit, might be uh, uh, quite a huge update. Hmm. 127 megabytes, nah, that's not that's not a lot, so it's okay, actually. But until that's finished, let's prepare those. Yeah, so now we're gonna work on, uh, on the infinite levels. So this is gonna be interesting, this is gonna take a while. I'm not sure if I'm gonna even finish today, but we'll see. I mean, at least the implementation should be should be done uh, fairly quick, but the the debug view that's gonna that's gonna take a while to do. Okay. 
Okay, so I think um, Collab just just crashed <laughs> while trying to push this. Ah, what the heck is wrong with you, Unity today? Wait, it says operation in progress, so it's still doing something. You know what? I think I'm gonna. What's happening if I do this? Okay, let's close and open Unity again. Uh, let's close this. No, don't save it. And this, yeah. Hello, thanks for the follow, from DK. How are you? Okay, we have to... Uh, no! No, don't tell me. Oh, god damn it. Please don't tell me you have to sync the whole project. Please don't be stupid. God damn it, Unity. God damn it. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, what the heck? Let's try it again. I can pop check to sync. Are you are you crazy? Please, please work, please work. Come on. I hope we're gonna have a... Um, I mean, all, that all the fire is gonna be okay after this update. I don't know what happened to... to... to collab. Okay, it's importing them again or something. Come on. Hey, this looks uh, good actually. Let's try to play again. Let's let's maximize it. Let's see. Well, actually, not like this. Uh, maximize on play. Yeah. And this is so fast. Let's put a laser. Here and another one. Here. And we have to add some, some some models for for the weapons and stuff, and some textures on the tower. And I still haven't figured out why the tower is blue. So I don't know if I said on the stream, but um, for some reason, so I up not uh, I updated Unity, and for some reason um, the tower turned blue. I have no idea why. Because the the material for the tower is white, the the directional light that I have in the scene is like yellowish. So I have no idea why this is uh why the tower is blue. No clue. Okay, anyway, but this looks this looks nice. Uh, it looks like it's working. So you should be able to go uh, further with uh, with working on the infinite levels. Hmm. 
nice yeah this looks uh, this looks good yeah, i think there is a bug uh actually let me check uh, i think the Let's see, where are the weapons? Here. Uh, runtime, no, attacks. Uh, no, uh, I mean, actually, I have to look at the laser too, but projectile, projectile attack. Um, yeah, I have to multiply the, 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 the delta time here with the, with the multiplier for the, for the game speed. Because, um, Otherwise, the, the actually no, I mean no. Yeah, this this should be multiplied by that, and also the the speed of the of the projectile should be. Um, yeah, here. So the speed should also be dependent on the the game speed. Yeah, actually, I'm going to make a task for this and uh, I'm going to come to this uh, some other time. And also, I think the, the same uh, should be applied to the laser. Let's see. But but for the laser, it's different because... Um, yeah, here. So the game speed should be applied to to the damage here. I may just make my own delta time, like a, um, yeah, I mean, not my own delta time, but uh, instead of getting the delta time like this, getting from the game speed manager, and uh, it would be pre-multiplied with the, with the game speed uh, multiplier. Uh, projectiles and the laser. Damage is not dependent on the game speed. And this is a bug. Uh, I don't want it in this print, let's throw it in the backlog. Okay. Yeah, but this works. So, so we're good uh, for now with the UI. As I said, we have to do something about the the weapons, but some other time. But now let's work on the on the infinite levels. So, um, oh my God, I love this song. Okay, so this is the task, and those are the things that we we have to do. So actually, let's look at the the task from last week, uh, which is this one. Okay, so so I've made this last last week. Uh, I mean, after the stream. Um, and what I've done is tidied up the code a bit, and I have this extrapolated data class, and we're gonna basically rewrite this uh, this uh, class in uh, in C sharp. But uh, whatever, what what does this? Um, extrapolated data class does, you gave it data and then you can request uh, uh, you can request the values that are out uh, that are outside of the specified uh, initial data. So basically it extrapolates data for you. So as you can see here, you have a get value method. 
and whatever. While I don't have, so so you gave it an index. I mean, uh, yeah, basically the x value. And as long as I don't have uh, a value for for that position, uh, I extrapolate the data, and then when I get it, I just return it. So basically, that's that's the whole uh, job of this class, this extrapolate uh, method, and uh, basically this uh, this way of getting the value. So it's creating uh, it's creating the values on the spot, and then. Um, you get the you, you, yeah yeah it returns that to you. So we're gonna we're gonna move this this to C sharp. Uh, we're gonna make some way of getting this data from the outside. So so right now we have upgrades. I mean we have upgrades implemented in the game, but there's no way for you to 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 buy it. It's just the foundation work done. Um, we might do the UI for that too. I'm not sure. We might just make add a button on the screen to 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 buy a new upgrade. Yeah, we might uh, we might just do that because it's not uh, it's not that hard. And then the actual hard part of this problem. I mean, what's left of this problem is this uh, debug view. So let me show you what what does uh, an upgrade looks like uh, right now. So here's the upgrades editor. So here is a place where you go and add and modify upgrades. Um, so here we have an upgrade for the tower health, for example. You have to try to, I mean, write a whole bunch of things in here, but the most important things are the levels. And yeah, you can put, you can add multiple levels, and you have the option to to say if this. Um... Yeah, so so we're working on the. Or actually, let me let me get you from the from the beginning. So we're working on um on a tower defense game. And um, the um, the interesting part uh, is that um, we're actually playing on an actual tower. So instead of having a like just a just a boring old map on which you play, uh, the action happens on an actual tower. I mean, right now it looks like shit, but uh, yeah, we're still working on it. Um, I might just fire up. Actually, let me just fire up the the prototype because we've made a prototype for this. And um, what? Where is it? Uh, defend. Wait. What? Where's the prototype? Uh, why don't I have this? Okay. Um, I should have it on on my on my PC, but I don't know. Um, uh, let me just find it. I think it's here, but. What the hell? Where the heck is my project? Oh, there we go. Prototype, defend the tower. Here we go. Uh, yeah, let's try to fire this up. I don't know why it wasn't in the list. I mean, I, I think I've uh, uh, made the uh, unity. I don't know. There are so many projects in uh, in uh, in in the hub right now, maybe maybe because of that it's screwed up somehow. Anyway, so here is the um, the prototype for the game. Let's wait for this to to finish. Okay. So as I said, you play um, you play on an actual tower. 
um, your goal is to 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 defend the the crystal on top, and as a as any other tower defense, there are enemies that go on different lanes, and you can place weapons. In this case, yeah, you place weapons on the tower, and then basically defend your tower. Um, yeah, it'll have multiple multiple lanes, um, different types of enemies. You have so I have a button here for buying a a, a power, um, which is so you have the weapons which fire automatically, but uh, you also have weapons you can uh, attack the enemies yourself. So in case you know. Uh, one enemy escapes and uh, you don't have enough money to to buy a new weapon uh, uh, a bit higher up uh, you can just use your uh, your uh, your zap to 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 slowly kill the enemies and um, what's not present in this um, in this prototype is so you'll have multiple levels and each level is going to be like uh, composed of like 10 waves and after each uh, after each level uh, the tower is gonna expand so you're gonna the uh, yeah it's just gonna grow um, more and you'll have uh, basically every 10 waves you're gonna have a uh, like a, a differently shaped uh, tower so um, the the paths are gonna are gonna change from uh, from level to level, so you're not gonna get stuck with uh, with uh, one single uh, tower. But the, but in the prototype we don't have that yet. But yeah, this is what's gonna look like at the end. Like uh, that's the that's the idea of the game. And yeah, right now we're trying to build it. Uh, this is just a prototype that I've made in. I don't know, two weeks or something like that. And now we're trying to make it actually better. So um, in this, uh, in the prototype, this uh, the paths that that you see, so those uh, white lines here are made by hand. Uh, but what we want to do in the in the actual game is, and what we are actually doing. Um, we, uh, we we're gonna build the tower out of uh, out of different pieces. So here's one for example. There's uh, one piece of the tower. Uh, let me move the whole thing actually. So here's a piece of the tower. You have in this case one just one lane. You have a place where you can put your weapon. And um, yeah, the idea is that. Uh, as I said, when you when you finish a level, you'll be able to expand the tower, so it's gonna grow in size. So, but right now that's not yet implemented in the UI. But uh, let's say I want to add another five uh, pieces to the tower. I can do this manually, and there you go. The the tower just grew, and new lanes appeared. Yeah, no, no worries. That's uh, that's why I'm here for, because on top of creating the game, I'm trying to also promote it. So, yeah, and um, yeah, what I what so so today I worked on the on the UI. Um, I made it look a bit uh, a bit more prettier because uh, before we had a uh, it looked like this have some random buttons and texts on the screen and now I've uh, we've, we've made it look a little bit uh, more prettier than than it was and now we're gonna work on um, yeah so it's gonna be on Steam uh, it's gonna be on Steam for sure and we're thinking about uh, mobile as well but we're not sure yet But yeah, Steam for sure, because we're we're already familiar with Steam. We've uh, 
uh, we've uh, released a game on Steam uh, last year, and uh, we kind of know how it, how to how to work with it. Okay. Oh yeah. So yeah, as I was saying. Um, Yeah, for sure we're gonna have Steam achievements. Um, I uh, we also have them for. So as I said, we we have another game that we've uh, that we've uh, made on Steam, and we have achievements for this. So yeah, for sure you're gonna have uh, we're gonna have achievements for this uh, new game as well. Yeah, I play from time to time. Not uh, not very much. But uh, but yeah, uh, we're gonna for sure have uh, achievements. I'm not sure what achievements we're gonna have, but uh, but for sure we're gonna have them. Okay. So as I was saying. Um, we're gonna work on the on the upgrades and um, yeah. So 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 for an upgrade, you can uh, you can define the levels that it's gonna have, and you also have the the option of saying that this level should have infinite levels, and you should be able to uh, upgrade it as much as you want, so or buy as many levels as you want. And um, yeah, what we're gonna work on is implement what we've done last stream with the um, with with the data so you have as you can see we I, I've only defined four levels and you have the multipliers for the, to the for the tower cell here and then from this data um, I want to to find out what's gonna be the the next the next values so that's what we've done uh, last stream and let me refresh this. So let's uh, let's say that those are the values for the, the for, from the levels, the multipliers uh, for the tower health, and then you can get the next values. Let's say this is the button for for buying a new level, and then you get the new the new value for the multiplier, and that's just gonna go up and up and up and up because that's how uh, that's how the the levels are are set up. So we have to move this to the to the game. And then uh, we're gonna do some uh, some other stuff. Uh, uh, I mean, with this. But first, uh, as I said, we're gonna have to make a. Uh, we're gonna have to make this class that does the calculations for the extrapolated data. So let's start by doing that. Um, now the question is, where should I put this? Because even though we're using it for upgrades right now, um, this is not, I'm gonna use it for, for other things as well. So I might just put it, um, should I make a new, I might just put it in utils or something, but that, but that mm, I don't know where, should, where I should put it. I might just put it in utils for now. Put it now. Oh, I don't like it. No, I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna make a uh, folder for it. Is the
Uh, let's start uh, tracking for the for this task. Okay, so yeah, uh, we're gonna call the 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 folder like this. Let's make a runtime folder. Runtime. Run time. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I hope uh, I hope you're gonna enjoy it. Oh, not tech. Uh, yes, yes. Let's add this to extrapolator. Yeah, let's add it to the dictionary. Uh, this computer. Yeah, sure. So this is just gonna be a simple class. Um, yeah, let's make a, uh, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, um, let's open this in unity so I don't have to search for it. Yeah. So I'm the, I'm the programmer and then I have a colleague that works on, uh, game design and level level design and some sound and, uh, yeah music and sound effects and also marketing so he does quite a lot of stuff but yeah my uh, i myself i'm doing the programming all the programming and a little bit of art I mean, I so so this is um, working on games is my is like my hobby, but uh, I I also have a day job, so I'm not doing this full time. So I have I'm working on a team. I'm also doing programming on my on my day job. So and I do work on a team, and it's it's okay. I don't mind working with other people. Uh, but for uh, for games, at least for right now, we don't actually need another programmer. It's not that I don't want to work with someone else. It's just not needed because the the games that we're making do not require um, more manpower. At least not on uh, on programming. Uh, there's no constructor in here. I have to do it like this. Okay, so let's see. So um I think I'm gonna make this a list. Yeah. It's gonna be a list of floats. Yeah, let's just call it data. Okay. Um, no, I know. Okay, so this should be it. Um, what I also want to do is, no, actually no, for now let's keep it like this. 
and let's just make the so I want I know I want a, a, a method that's gonna return a float get value at it's gonna be an int and it's gonna be the index and um yeah I'm gonna do the same thing so um if index is less than data dot length or no if it's more uh than data dot length well wait what have I done to I mean I have the code I just have to 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 transcribe it so I've done more than the minus one. Yeah, okay. So more than, uh, oh yeah, it's count uh, minus one. Are you also a programmer, by the way? Or do you, uh, do you uh, work on, in, um, Game development. Are you making a game, a game right now, or uh, what are you doing? Uh, private static float yeah, it's slow actually yeah that's all I have to do um Oh now, oh so you're uh, so you're in college. That's cool. I tried college as well, but uh, it didn't work out for me. I uh, I dropped out after a while. I uh, it was easier for me to to learn by myself than to stay in class. But also most of the things that they were. Um, teaching um i already knew so not a lot of uh, new stuff to learn oh nice it's um i don't want plot Okay, so extrapolate.
that cost. Navar y zero. Yeah, let's get uh, Y1 as well. So Y0 and Y1. So that's the slope and Y2 uh, is going to be, what is it? So it's Y0 plus uh, m times 2. Next, let's uh, add this comment because it's important actually. Let's add this like so. Is, seems not right here. Something I don't like. So I know this is a there's a difference of two here, but um Oh yeah, so you add two X one difference between those two. But why why does it look weird to me? Um Oh, because I'm stupid, because this is not zero, this is actually this, which is two, yeah, so this, this is equal to two times six, one minus two times six, zero. Yeah, this, this is okay. Yeah, so basically, because I know um, that my x values are actually um, one unit apart, one from another, always, um, I don't have to do all those calculations. I can just say that, yeah, uh, it's going to be just two across. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this is okay. Actually, no, uh, I said I'm going to leave that comment. And I'm going to add the, the new value at the end. What's happening here? Read only? Yes. This can be made read only. Sure. OK, so we're, we're extrapolating the value. We can get the value at what at one index. Um, one thing that, uh, so or the, or the other thing that, that I want to do is so 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 a thing that I've done um, different from our um, let's see actually do I have the two plot yeah I have the two plots here let's see if you can compare them.
Yeah. So my initial um, my initial version for this uh, extrapolated data um, was just using. So I was using the the last two values. Um, so in this case, those two, getting the slope, and then with that continuing um, creating new values using that same slope. So that that would result in a um, yeah, basically a line because the slope would never change. But that's not necessarily correct because I I should take into consideration all the values, not uh, not the not uh, only the the last two. So what I've done is whenever you you create an, a new instance of this class, this extrapolated data, um, you actually make a new instance and the data that you provide. So, 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 so yeah, each time you create an instance of extrapolated data, um, inside of it, you actually make a new instance to a new instance, and the data uh, and the data for it are the slopes. So as so I group, um, yeah, the slopes between each point that you that you provide. So I get the slopes between those two points. I get the slope between those two points, and then that continues until uh, until I yeah I have a, a condition to stop this. So what this uh, helps me with. Um, I'm not only extrapolating the, the 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 let's say the final data, but I'm also extrapolating the uh, the values for the slopes. So that gives me, given those those values, that that actually gives me a a curve at the end. So if I, if I would have this, like this is this is linear. Uh, my two graphs would never would be the same uh, would be the same so so it's linear right now but just by having let's put something more dramatic if I have something like this um, the new value or the, or the value actually rises because uh, the the slope increases from from this pair to this pair And also, if I make it like one, actually, this is something that I don't like, but I, I don't know how to solve it. If I put something less here instead of uh, a, a linear, a linear, um, yeah, uh, getting the the values in a line, they actually go down with time, which is not quite what I wanted. I might have to do some more tweaking with this. Uh, but uh, but yeah, um, having this kind of recursion using uh, using this class for the slopes of of the of the initial data um, helps me make those uh, those curves instead of having only linear data. So we have to do this as well. So. Um, I have to pass the data here, um, so I have to calculate the, the slopes. Um, let's see. Let's make a, 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 a method that gives me the slopes of all the of all the points. Um, so it would be a flow. No. Um, float. Yeah. No. Can I make it like this? Um. Not sure if I can do this, but let's try. 
So for uh, var e equals one, e is less than data dot. Okay, so this can be an i enumerable. Um, let's make this a list. I actually have a list that I call this, so let's do it like this. Um, yield return, um, get slope of data of i minus one and data of i. Now what I want to see if is I can do this, pass in the data and then I can't. How can I do this? I mean, I know I can make a list right there and just return it, but I, I would have prefer prefer not to do it. But I'm not sure how how else I can do it. So that I just make a list and then just be done with it. I I can optimize this uh, later if I if I need to. Damn it! A list of float. Uh, slopes at at this turn slopes. Okay, but this is not actually that nice. Let's make another. Um, another constructor. And actually I make this I may make this a list. Okay. Uh and then I want not actually depth. Hmm. Actually, I don't even need this depth, to be honest. I only do it. I can do it like this, and then um, I have more than two values, or you have two values, I can still make a, no, if I have two values, I can just uh, calculate the, the slope myself. But if I have more than two values in the data, I want, uh, I want an extrapolator for this. Um, Yeah, I'm actually gonna do the same thing, uh, except I don't have to do the list here, but I still have to do this. 
And actually, I have to, to do this as well. Ah, God damn it, that's, that looks uh, ugly. Um, Oh, actually, I don't even need to pass that. So I need this. And it's going to shout at me because those things are read only. Ah, I hate that. You know what? Screw this. I'm going to just have duplicated code, but I will know why. I don't like it though. Okay, so now I'm gonna have a private private load um Do I need um also need the X and it's gonna be an int so I say if has extrapolator for slow if I have this uh I'm gonna return slope extrapolator dot get value at uh, I think x1 is what I want. Let me check the code. Yeah, x1. So x1 here. Otherwise, I'm going to just return the this get slope with y0 and y1. And actually, I don't need x0. So now here, instead of uh, doing get slope, I'm going to do internal get slope. And also pass in the x1. So now we should have everything that we need. Let's make this like so. We can actually do it like this. There you go. Okay, now we should do some tests with this to see if it actually works. So let's make a let's make this a mono behavior. Let's do start. So Uh, so one one point one f one point two f get value at so zero one two let's get value at three. Now let's do value at 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then 5. Let's see how this works. Um, let's put this here and get OBS back on the screen. Okay, let's make a... Yeah, let's make the uh, theme object empty here. Save and let's play. I don't want this. Okay, this looks like it's linear, which is not what we wanted. Not at all what we wanted. So let's see where we failed. Let's put a 
breakpoint here, another one here, and uh, what else? What else? Um, let's put one here, and we might want one here. Okay. Uh, and we have to attach the debugger. Let's get out of play mode. Enable for this session. Let's try it again. Okay, so we have the data. We have three values, so we should get a slope extrapolator. This has two values, which is... Oh, I'm stupid. No, that, that looked perfectly fine because I, I, I put in... This is a this is a this is a line. This is linear because the slope doesn't change. I'm I'm stupid. Yeah, I think it worked. Let's put a one there. Let's uh, just resume. Uh, no, uh, let's first uh, disable breakpoints. Let's resume. Well, let's try this again. I think that that works. But let's see what's happening here. Uh, what? Yeah, there we go. 1.21, 0.34, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0.35, 0
depth of six. Oh my god, I need one more value. 1.7 F. Let's get another value in here. And we should see. We should see it stop an extrapolator with three. There we go. So it's still false, but the data is. Uh, it has three, three values in the data. And now that I think about it, five might be also too much, but yeah, we're just gonna roll with it. We're gonna check this if. Um, if it turns out not to be a great idea. Okay. What is this saying to us? Okay, yeah, sure, this has to be private and it has to look like this. Fair point. I actually want to prevent. I, I don't want to use this uh, comparison with null. So we're gonna do this. This is a little bit better, performance-wise. I mean. Because even though we're gonna have a maximum of five uh, extrapolators for the um well actually if you get a, the depth of five I should stop not go past five uh what was I saying oh yeah even though we're gonna have a, a limit of five extrapolators um we have to keep in mind that we're gonna have multiple um um multiple what multiple upgrades in the game and other stuff because we're going to use those extrapolators for other stuff as well so um yeah I, we don't want to go crazy with the extrapolators the const right at the top private const int Okay. Yeah, that should do it. I feel like I wanna I wanna remove a comment that we have here as well. Uh, yeah. Is this um? Let's move this. Uh, this bit should be divided by x1 minus x0, but because we know those values are one apart, this actually is one. So we don't have to do the, do a division here uh, because we know it's gonna be it's always gonna be divided by by one. But it's it's good to know that how we got to this to this uh, formula from the from the original one. Actually, let's put it like this. It's gonna be yeah. Like this, and then let's reverse this. So it's over one, and one is actually this. Okay. And let's put a double slash here. Okay. Okay, so we have the extrapolator. Uh, is there anything else I wanted to do with it? Let's uh, look at the task. We are holding the initial data and we are 
extrapolating it on demand yeah so this is this is this is done and now we have to take care of all those other stuff this is gonna be the the fun part um i think we're gonna start with the or no i think we we first have to use hmm. I don't know what I don't know what I want to do. Uh, I don't know what I want to do. No, I think we're gonna create a debug view uh, first, and then. Uh, and then uh, do this. What, what what I don't know actually is what I want from this debug view. So so uh, no, what I know is that I want to plot the values that I get, like I like I'm doing right here. So so that's one thing that I know. Uh, let me get this. I actually, it doesn't matter. I know I want to plot those values. One request what I, uh, that I got from the from from my colleague was, okay, this looks pretty, but I actually want to see those values. So he wants uh, whenever I we you you hover over um, a line, uh, he wants to see the values at this uh, at this point. Yeah, he wants to see the actual number. So um, we have to do that somehow. And we need to support multiple, um, multiple lines. Um, because uh, for example, for upgrades, let's get to, let's get an upgrade, uh, the, the upgrade editor in here. Uh, come on. So for upgrades, uh, first of all, you want to um, extrapolate the data for the multiplayer. So you want to extrapolate the multiplayer, but also you want to extrapolate the cost. The cost. So I, I want both of those um, lines on the screen, that uh, debug view. But if you get to, to, to draw at least one that's gonna be huge then we can uh, uh, draw the second one um, another thing that I'm that I'm thinking about is I think that I wanna so so most probably the 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 debug view is gonna be a separate window you will be able to click a button somewhere here and then have a separate window that's gonna open and uh, it's gonna show you the data and um, I think I want to be able to change the data in here, and then the debug view should up should update in uh, real time. Yeah. So that's also that's also a thing that I wanna that I wanna do. That's actually, I think that's everything. And I think the the hardest part from all of that I've said is um, making that hover effect. <laughs> I think that is going to be the hardest part. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be the hardest part. From all of this, but we have to see.
Um, um, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, thanks. I hope it's uh, I hope it's useful. Um, yeah, the thing is, I I'm not quite sure how I want to um, uh, draw the graph. So I have two ideas of of how to do it. So so right now for um, for drawing. Uh, all of this, or let's say the editor, not actually those those fields in here. But for drawing the editor, we're using UI Toolkit from from Unity, and I was um, checking out how we, how I can draw lines. What's this? Volumetric clouds, nice. Uh, I was uh, checking out how to draw lines. Um, and I've seen that there are there are ways of doing it. Um, I mean, yeah, there there's some code around here. Um, I haven't tested it yet, uh, tested it yet, but um, uh, I will I will do it uh, to to see if it uh, to see if it actually works. Um, but uh, and uh, one other uh, one uh, other. Um, Idea is to use um, um, use sh oh actually it's on the first page no I actually it. yeah uh, one other idea is to use shapes for this uh, so this is a a vector library um, for for drawing uh, um, yeah uh, editor stuff and also stuff at runtime. But I might I might give this a try as well. Uh, I mean I can also use the the things from Unity, but uh, the the good thing with this is that uh, uh, it's anti-aliased and it looks much prettier, and you have way more um, control over how how it looks. Um, actually, let, let me show you an example. Um, let's see how I can get to that. Let me. Um, where is Freya? Here. Announcements. So this is a video from the creator of Shapes, and it's actually it's a it's a video that was created in Unity using Shapes. Um, There's a video about uh, Bezier curves. But what I, what I wanted uh, what I wanted to show was this graph. So this is why why I'm thinking of using Shapes because I I've seen that it looks it looks good. I mean, it doesn't come up with uh, with uh, with a way of drawing uh, a graph, but uh, it gives you all the tools for for doing uh, for doing it, doing it yourself, or you know, drawing lines and uh, looking pretty. And um, yeah, um, that's uh, this is another idea. Maybe I, maybe I can use shapes for this, but either way. Uh, I don't know how to deal with uh, with hovering over um, the dots, the, the points. I mean, not not easily. I would have hoped to. Hey, actually no. I think I have an idea. Hmm. Actually, I think I have an idea. Well, this might not be pretty. I think I have an idea of how to do this. And I can use UI Toolkit and I can use whatever they have to show. Oh, oh yes. Oh yes, I think I have an idea. Yeah, we're going to use UI Toolkit. Yeah. Yeah, so what I'm thinking of doing is um, so in in UI Toolkit you have um, let me let me show you um, you're creating uh, 
uh, interfaces using uh, using uh, using elements. I mean, yeah, you have tags that you use to create elements like um, let's see, upgrade, upgrades editor. You're creating tags. You're writing in this uh, XML format uh, whatever you want to add to to the editor. And um, what I'm thinking of doing is um, I can actually let's test this first. So I should be able to go here and say that I want to position this. No, let's show all. Let's search for position. So right now it's on position relative, so all the elements flow nicely, but I can actually change it to absolute. Yeah. And now what I can do is, uh, left, top. Now I can position it wherever I want. So now, Think about this as um, I make this have a width of five pixels, uh, a height of also five pixels, which is actually small. Uh, let's try 10 pixels. Anyway, you might you might get the idea. So this looks like an ugly. No, yeah, it looks like an ugly dot. But uh, let's remove the text. So here we go. So so I can create dots with this, and then I can position them wherever I want because I can move them. And then, um. Yeah, all I have to do is draw the lines between the between the dots. But the dots themselves, I can make them using uh, using elements, and then use position absolute to to put them wherever I, wherever I want. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Cause cause the thing is, using using AI toolkit now and using you know um, default elements from them. Um, it has, um, I don't know if I can do it here. Um, yeah, I can do it here, but I can write, actually, let me see, uh, what's this name button, name button. There we go. So I have name button and then I can do a name button um, hover. Background color red. Now if I save this. Actually it doesn't. I don't know. I, um, I, it, the, the, the background might come from somewhere else. Or uh, I can do not important, right? Can I do not important? Is that a thing? No, it's not. Never mind. Yeah, but the, but the idea is that it supports this kind of tag. Um, so whenever you hover over the element, I can do stuff to, to it. Um, let's have transform. There's the border. Um, border radius 100 pixels. Let's try this. This should work. Yeah, there we go. So you have forwards, and whenever I hover, I change the the radius of the border. So now think about this. Whenever I hover, I I show another element. So now now the hover mechanism is their job. So I don't have to do anything. I just have to declare those elements however however oh, however I want them. I write the CSS for it. To, to show an element only when I when the uh, when the when the dot is uh, is hovered, and then it's their job to do to do this for me. And then all I have to do is draw those lines between the between the points that I draw. And that's it.
yeah that's what the, that's how we're gonna do it that is how we're gonna do it and the the, the dots uh, you, you know drawing the the actual dots that should be fairly easy um and we can do the lines between the dots um uh, later because they're the, the lines are not that important Okay, let's see how we can do this. So let's go back to our extrapolator and let's create a let's create a new directory here. So editor. We're gonna create a directory inside. Um Yeah, sure, something like this. X, yeah, explorer, explorer. And now, because I don't remember how to do it, uh, actually, no, first let's. Um, Create the assembly ref, uh, yeah, assembly definition reference. Create assembly definition reference. Uh, not quite actually. Um, let's move this to the parent. And let's get this from. Come on, Unity. Oh. I want to. Yeah, XO. And let's hook this to the editor assembly. Now we should get project tower editor. That's nice. So we, so the so the, so our scripts are gonna be in the in the correct uh, um, in the correct uh, assembly definition. Okay. Now, as I was saying, I don't remember how to do this. Um, even though I've done this editor like, I don't know, two weeks ago. So we're just gonna steal from code from this, um, from this thing. And project tower, uh, this is not gonna have a menu item. It's gonna have an init function, but uh, we're gonna call this, we're gonna have a button somewhere. And when you click on it, we're gonna show this. So this is gonna be, uh, let's copy this. Extrapolator Explorer. I don't have a better name for this, so this will do it for now. Okay. What do we need? Um, Actually, when we initialize, no, one thing. Um, yeah, we want to create a window instead of get window because I want a new window every time you click on the one, whatever button you put in the UI for, for opening this. Uh, the reason is, um, I wanna I wanna be able to have uh, two um, two two windows of this type open at the same time. Extrapolators. Okay, so we need, whenever we create this editor, we need to give a, uh, uh, we need a, a reference um, 
to all the extrapolators that we want to show. Actually, no, let's add this uh, below. Yeah, no, let's keep it as pri uh, pri private. Um, I hit this again, plop it here. So before we show the extra, uh, um, before we show the window, we do the setup by and, uh, and we're passing the extrapolators. And one thing I'm wondering, so 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 before I was doing, uh, I was um, actually it doesn't matter if I do it on enable or not. No, I think I, I think I'm gonna need a private void um, not draw but plot plot yeah And I'm gonna get a this is gonna be the element in which we're gonna put our um, our stuff. And this is gonna be our extrapolator. We are going to do let's see. Um Let's say for now that we want to plot the first um, 10 points. Let's get from, yeah, zero is fine. Um, actually, this is gonna, I'm gonna rename this to X. I'm gonna get the Y. Y is gonna be extrapolator get value at X. We're gonna do over top. Uh, which is gonna be oh. So this is a top. It's gonna be the left position root dot. Uh, no, uh, directly. This is gonna be x. Um, like let's put this uh, before the, the for loop. God damn it! Just let me move this. Um, I want to scale those values so they're not bunched together. And let's see. Um, 
dot is gonna be a new visual element um, style the top is gonna be top the dot style dot left is gonna be left dot that uh, add to class list uh, dot for each Load extrapolator. Uh, what's going to be the root uh, root uh, root visual element extrapolator? And one thing that I uh, that I will need is let's create a USS file. Um, Okay. Uh, dot is gonna have a width of ten pixels, a height of ten pixels, um, background color of white, or no? Um, let's get a, a gray in here. Um, Border radius of 100%. I can't use percent. That's awesome. Uh, five pixels then. And that's actually it. Uh, one other thing. Root visual element dot add. No. How the hell do, you, do I add a um, style sheet? The root style sheet, uh, okay. And I need this. So those are some um, helper function, or, or this is a helper function. For getting, um, so I need uh, for for this to work. So so I want to. Okay, let's get from the from the top. I want to load this file and attach it to my um, to my editor. So to load it, I use asset database dot load asset dot path to yeah to load it uh, and. The path should be a um, an absolute path, and I don't want to type the path manually because if I I don't know uh, if I want to move this folder uh, sometime in the future, I would have to come here and change the path, which is not going to be pretty. So I've made a um, I've made a uh, um, a method that gets the path for me. So I just give it a file and it returns me the 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 path uh, to that file, the absolute path. It's not intelligent or whatever. It doesn't care if the file exists or not. It's just gonna give me a path as if the the file is next to the... So, so basically, actually, no, here, here I'm giving it a, a, a relative path and, uh, and the, 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 the method gives, gets me back uh, an absolute path to, to that file. So because the, the files are uh, next to each other, I just give it the, the file name. Okay, so now we actually have to, to, to use that init function. So let's see. In the, not in the upgrades editor, but in the upgrades itself, Upgrade definition. At the bottom, I want to do something. So here, uh, actually, let's go underneath this. So private. Um, let's do this in an. Yeah, let's do this in an if. So private void. 
open explorer and now oh shit i can't do it oh oh no oh no how the hell do i do this Actually, I know how to do it, but it's not pretty. Ah, oh, god damn it! Um, so the problem is that in the editor assembly, I have access to anything from the runtime assembly. So I have access to the extrapolator, for example, which is in the runtime assembly. But that's not true the other way around. So whatever I have in the, yeah. So whenever I am in the runtime assembly, I don't have access to anything from the editor assembly. So that means that if I, if I would want to say I want this and I want to call the init method on extrapolated explorer, I can't because uh, we don't know what this is. Uh, the 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 yeah, the, it, it, because it's not in the same. Uh, we don't have a uh, the, the 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 reference assembly doesn't know about the editor assembly. Um, so so we don't have a reference to it. We, we're gonna we, we can get a reference to this class. So so we can call init on it. So one thing that we can do is. Let's see. Um, we can create a custom editor for this data type, which sounds way scarier than it is, but I just didn't want to do it. But the thing is, um, making custom editors, um, I don't know why I said dot editor there. I should have uh, wrote it without the dot. Um, actually, not Odin editor, but I want editor headerless. Yeah, that's the one. And I want don't I have some things here? Uh, that I can draw with um, on header GUI, not header GUI. Yeah, this on after default inspector. Oh yeah, here we go. And after default inspector, I want to create a button. So um, so we are in I'm GUIing territory. So. Um, we lay out that button open explorer and if we click on this what i want to happen is extrapolator explorer dot init so here it picked this up right away because it knows we're in the same assembly and he wants a, an, a list of extrapolators and we don't have that um yeah we don't have a list of extrapolators but what we have is access to the data so let's make a new extrapolator um actually let's make it here so um Okay, I was about to sneeze, but uh, apparently I don't have to anymore. Uh, let's put a zero for now there, so that it doesn't shout at me. Okay, so we have that. And now we have to put the data in here. Um, let's define this as a custom editor for our upgrade definition. And here we do have, so as I said, 
when we're in the editor uh, assembly, we do have access to the runtime assembly. So actually, this should be ESS.Upgrades.Editor. Um, yeah, OK. So here we have access. Because we're in the editor, from the editor, we have access to the runtime, but not the other way around. OK, so now um, um, let's call this T, whatever. Um, we have to cast this. So we have, I want to cast this, and it's called target, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So it's target, and I want. Um, let's see, what can I get from here? So I get T dot. I can get multiplayer for level, which is not that interesting to me. I would like to have access to the levels itself. Um, let's see. Where are my levels? So those are my levels. So let's do this. So if we're in the editor, Uh, public, um, let's just copy this, why not? Come on, come on. God damn it. God damn it. Okay, so if we're in the editor, we're gonna have access to this, uh, to this um, property, which is gonna return us the levels. So I don't want this to be accessible from uh, or uh, at runtime. Uh, I want to get the data f uh, through this. <laughs> here we go. We have a we have a to do here. That's what that's exactly what we're doing today. Uh, implement infinite levels. Um, yeah. So so only in the edit in, in the editor I have I I I want to have access to the levels array because I because I need it to to parse the data. You know. So let's get to this. So instead of this here, I'm going to do t.levels.select. So for each level, uh, L, I want l.multiplier. And actually, that's it. That's all I need. Theoretically, this should work. Let's try it. If you go to the project tower, upgrades editor, we should have a button here. And we don't. Of course we don't. Because why should it be easy when it can be hard? Right? Where the hell is my button? I really, where the hell is my button? I really thought we were going to get a bot in here. I really thought that. Um, maybe it's not showing up here for some reason. Let's try to go to the uh, to the upgrade directly here. There we go. So, so here we have a button. And there we don't. I don't know why, though. Um, but it works for now. So if I click on this. We got something. It looks like shit, but let's see if it works. Of course, it doesn't work because even though I've created those, uh, where's my explorer? Even though I created those those elements, I haven't actually added them to the root, so they're nowhere. Dot. So let's try this again. When Explorer, a hey, we have data. We actually have data. Now, it doesn't look good because we have to so the higher or actually no it should have worked hmm. let's look at the data actually let's inspect it or let's look at the elements uh, i mean so here's the root 
and here are my dots. Um, Let's see the, the position. So where's the position? Um, is this it? Uh, yeah, no. Wait, 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 wait. Oh yeah, that makes sense. I've done all that all of these things, but I haven't specified that this is or this has position absolute. Absolute. Hey, we have stuff here now. Except that it doesn't work. Okay, let's try something. Um, I'm I'm inclined to think that this here uh, is probably zero when I call this. Uh, first of all, let's try to cache this. So, um, what would this be? Um, editor height, let's say. I'm gonna Log this. Ah, come on. We should get a uh, a console log here. Uh, actually, we have to to open the extrapolator again. Or the uh, yeah, the explorer. I mean, yeah, not a number. That's even better. I thought it's gonna be zero. Um. Let's try the world bounds. Though I don't think that that's gonna work here. Nope. Anyway, um, let's for now hard code it as 200 pixels, um, and see if this uh, if this works. There we go. Um, yeah, this does make sense. It does go down because this value should be higher. Um, so from this one to this one is 0.35. So this should be at least 2.1. If you want it to be linear, no, it's not going to be linear. Oh, not even. I'm confused. What? Let's get more points in here. Let's say 100 points. Uh oh, shit! I sorry. I, I I've just seen the the message. Um. I don't know if you're still here, but um, uh, I usually stream for yeah at least two or three hours uh, each uh, Saturday. Um, but it depends on on yeah if I uh, if I how much I want to work on on a certain day. And this is um, this thing with the infinite levels is actually quite interesting for me. So. So I'm gonna try to I'm trying to work a, a bit more on this. Why is this going down like like this? Why is it going down? Let's make this insanely huge. Let's see if it goes up. Oh yeah, now it goes up. Let's try 2.5. Okay. I'm probably just bad at math. Oh no, it does make sense why it goes down. 
Um, yeah, so, so yeah, I was doing again linearly. So so between those two is uh, 0.35 uh, difference. So I just added 0.35 to this to get a new value. But because this was this is not uh, 0.35 uh, distance apart, it it messed with uh, with the slopes. So yeah, yeah, now it works. And now it works fine. So, so yeah, so basically we should have more than three, three five here, probably like 0.4 or something like 0.45. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We have, we have this. It works. Um, what we need though is is something that I've done last week and I don't remember how to do. Um, but actually, no, I want to know when uh, this uh, view is uh, is resized. So we'll have to look into that. Um, let's first see if this, there's something, no, there's not. There's no uh, resize stuff. Uh, let's look in here too. Because I want to redraw. Um, uh, those dots whenever I resize the window. So, okay, and there's nothing here, so we have to search for this. So let's get. Uh, actually, let's copy this. Um. No. Yeah, this. I don't care about this. I want to know when it's resized. That's what I care about. Back transform dimensions change. I don't know if this is what I want, but this does give me an idea. UI toolkit resize. We might have a. I don't want to make them resizable. Uh, resize event. So if this is UI, it is UI toolkit, uh, dispatching events, customizing events, handling events. Um, I think layout, uh, layout events is what we're looking for. Geometry change. Yeah, I think this is what, I, what we want. Um, Though, to be honest, I don't know exactly how to use it, but I think this is what we're looking for. Um, fortunately, the, the, the events from your toolkit are not the most um, intuitive things. But I may have an idea how to, how to do this. Okay, so here we do the setup. We are plotting our extrapolators and one other thing that I want to do is say root visual element dot uh, not register callback uh, add or okay so it is register callback yeah We use this event here.
Now we should be able to do this, maybe. File. Hey, nice. So whenever I resize this, uh, that that does the stuff. Um, let's clear this. Let's use the root here. Let's try this again. There we go. I mean, this doesn't do anything, but. Okay, uh, let's try to make a straight line so it's easier to to see. So 2, 4, 6, 1.8, open Explorer, nice. Okay, and now we can do what we what I wanted to do the the hover event because or the hover thingy because that's the the most important thing of this whole editor to actually see the data. Okay, so we have the dot. Um, oh my god, this might be actually easier than I thought. Um, it has a tooltip. It has a tooltip. <sighs> can actually just write the data here. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, level, let's say level. Um, level is x. And slash n. Um, uh, value, let's call it value. Value is y. Oh my God, if this works, that's gonna be amazing. Let's make the scale a little bit bigger so we have more space between the dots. I might just make the dots smaller though. But uh, let's see if this works. Uh, let's close this editor. I should make it so, but I actually, I don't think I can. And it actually doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, no, let's just do it like this. A. Nice. So now you actually get the values when you hover over the dots. And it was actually easier than I thought. Let's make the dots smaller. Let's make them like... Uh... I think I'm gonna... Mm. Let's see... Yeah, this is actually nice. So now, to be honest, most of the work is done right now because, yeah, we actually have the data. And now all we, ha all we have to do, which is actually not, uh, we have to make this a little bit more, more performant because right now we're just creating like a, a gazillion of points, which is not that cool um or we're actually instantiating or yeah creating new elements we should uh, we should uh, uh, reuse them so we should make a pool of uh, of dots and and reuse them so we don't have uh, yeah we don't have like a lot a lot of them we should create points until i mean or we shouldn't create points outside of the of the of the editor if if we reach uh, outside of the editor we shouldn't uh, add more so we'll have to change this for loop 
uh, I would like to have uh, sliders for controlling the scale of the of the graph. So you can uh, bunch the the points together uh, or spread them apart. Um, I also want to make the uh, them. Actually, let's add the. Oh no, let's not add it now. Um, Theoretically, now I can add the, the cost as well and see it on the on the on the, on the screen. Um, yeah, let's yeah let's start with with this. So um, editor bound. Okay. With height, with um, so I'm gonna change this. Uh, we can remove this. So while uh, var i equals zero, while i less than or i times scale less than editor width. I'm gonna do this. And then i plus plus, which i is not actually i, this will be x. So now we're not going to add points um, if we're outside of the bounds of the window. We're only going to add as many points as we need, not, not more. So now we, if we look at this. Let's put it in the background. So now if I resize, yeah, as you can see, this, this is getting laggy. If I do something like this, we should get just a... Uh... Hey, never mind. There are a shit ton of dots. Oh, because I said plus instead of multiply. Of course. Silly mistakes. Um, yeah, let's try it again. Now we should only have a couple of dots. Yeah, there we go. So that's the last dot. Uh, you can see it, uh, it turns blue when I hover over it. And then if we make this bigger, we get more dots, which is awesome. But now, as I said, uh, this is kind of getting, getting laggy because whenever I, I modify this, oh, actually it's not laggy right now, it's laggy when I have the debugger over. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I have to, to make this uh, um, not be laggy uh, anyway. So I'm going to I'm going to make a pool of uh, of dots like just create, uh, I don't know, a thousand dots and just uh, reuse them whenever I need. Cool. Um, what else can we do that's simple? Let's create a um, color. Which, how do you make a color? Um, actually, does the does UI Toolkit support HLS? I'm not sure. Um, I don't know what uh, what uh, uh, color formats they support. I'm not gonna find it like this. Uh, maybe here, actually. Uh, property types, supported properties. Property types, maybe. Okay, so they support RGB or RGBA, but not HLS. Well, that's not that cute. Uh, but this works. Yeah. Uh. 
Oh. Yes, please. This works too. Um, so Q is between zero and one. Okay, so um, we have this. But actually, no. Uh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make my own. So a range, as I said, zero zero to one f. Okay, uh, saturation, let's put it at 7.5 and um, value at 1, or no, value should be at 0.5 maybe. And here, dot uh, style dot background color, color, it should be this. Okay, let's see how this looks. No, oh, goddammit, that looks like shit. Let's put this as one at one. Hey, there we go. And we have this problem. <laughs> That's nice. So whenever I uh, redraw the the graph, I get a new I generate a new color. So we get ram uh, rainbows. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to save the colors somewhere and uh, reuse them. But uh, the thing is, uh, it does exactly what I wanted. I get a uh, a random color for the for the line so um that is awesome that is awesome okay let's save the actually no uh now yeah uh, let's save the color so let's do here so private um color or what was that style color? What's this style value that can be either color or style keyword? Um, style color array, I guess. Colors. Set up extrapolators. Colors equals two. Extrapolators dot. Um. Select nothing goes to uh, this. Okay. And now that I think about it, I don't think I want to uh, send the extrapolator here, but I want to send the index. So int and then I'm going to say uh, extrapolator is Extrapolators of index. Here I have to transform this in a for loop. Send the i in here. And what else? What else? Yeah, here. So the color. What the heck? We get colors of i. And now we don't need this anymore. Uh, not i, but index. My bad. So now we should have the same color um, uh, after we 
I resize the window. So let's try it. Open Explorer. There we go. Nice. Okay. And we still have this. Uh, this is actually not level zero. This should be level one. So let's add a plus one to this X. Because level zero is always will have a value of one. Um, well, actually, it depends. For the multiplier, it's going to be a value of one. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, so we have colors. We have the hover effect. We don't have yet the lines. Um, I said I want to do. Um, let's do. Uh, let's do an object pool of, of elements. Let's do that. Yeah. So. Private. Uh, let's do a list of. List of visual element. Cast dots. Let's make a new list. Okay, so let's see, we're gonna do like um, 100 points by default. Uh, let's actually private void add new dot, create new dot. And we're actually gonna return it, so we Visual element, and we're gonna do this. Uh, we don't need this. Uh, color top left, this is not needed. The tooltip is not actually needed. We only care about the class. We are going to add it to the cache. So, dot. And we're going to return it. Create new dot. We're going to do this here. Let's populate this. Um, we have to do it here. And we need another, uh, another method, actually. Private. Um, it's going to return a visual element. Get dot uh, uh, get dot and uh, we actually need something else here so private God damn it. Um, x dot index it's gonna be zero If uh, next dot index is equal to cache dots dot count, we're gonna return create new dot. Else we're gonna go to the cache dots and get the next dot index. Uh, why doesn't this work? Wait, what? Oh, return. And uh, let's make it like this.
Okay. Um, something here dot dot uh, style dot display equals flex uh, or none okay Okay. Uh, no, my bad. Uh, this is gonna be a flex when you get a dot. And here we're gonna um. Um, and five dots. Um, so I'm gonna do for each through all the dots. Dot, and we're gonna copy this line. And instead of flex, we're gonna say, I don't wanna display it. So now here, instead of doing new visual element, we're gonna get, uh, use get dot and uh, root root and that's it. We, and we don't need to pass in anything else. That's that's it, like so. Uh, there's an error somewhere. Yeah, here. So this is where I wanna, where I want to put my dots. So now I should be able to see, so um, after this compiles, I'm gonna open the Explorer and nothing's gonna work. Yeah, that's awesome. What the hell? Where are my dots? There are no dots. What the hell? <laughs> Where are all the dots? Have I not called? I called this, what the hell? Um, I actually haven't called this, but this doesn't change anything. Um, I don't have the dots in the, the element here. What's happening? I'm adding I, I'm adding them to the root, so they should be there. I'm adding them to the to the to the cache list. Um, oh, this also should be um, it should be reset to zero whenever this changes. Yeah. Let's try it again. Still doesn't work. Nope, I still don't have dots here. Uh, let's try to. Nope, not even if I resize it. Let's try to put a, put a breakpoint here and see what's happening. So, wait, what the heck? Okay, something bad is happening. I don't know what, but something bad is happening. Okay, 
Uh, I think we have uh, an infinite loop somewhere. Yep, this is frozen. Yep, um, we can confirm by looking at the task manager. Actually, actually, this doesn't look bad. So the, the editor, it's wait. No, okay, so something crashed for sure. The editor is not taking 93 megs. No, 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 no. That is not right. There are 100 dots here. What the hell is going on here? This is not happening. This is not running. What the hell is going on? Okay, so the editor is frozen. Oh, never mind, because I have it paused. Um, what the hell? Open Explorer. So now I'm creating dots. This list is empty, which is as expected. Uh, well, this is gonna take a while. Now we're here. Um, let's see what's happening here. So this has uh, this is nan for whatever reason. Now we're gonna hide all the dots, which are 100 uh, of them, and we're back here. Now we have a correct uh, width and height. So now we should be using the dots. I am. Oh, I'm making them. Wait. Wait. Oh, I'm stupid. Yeah, uh, I know why. Let's remove all of those. And this. Uh, because of this. So I'm actually clearing the 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 root. This is no longer needed because uh, we're actually pulling those uh, those elements. So. We don't have to remove them every time the, the window is uh, resized. So let's try it again. Uh, um, or so I thought. Oh, never mind. Oh, we have a dot. We have only one dot. Uh, obviously, because we haven't incremented this after we got the value. We're still using the the first the first dot. Close this. Open this, and here we go. Now, if you go to this, we have a lot of of a lot of dots, but um, they're still there. Even though I'm uh, I'm playing with the window. Uh, they're not disappearing, they're still there, but they are, um, let's see what it is. Yeah, they have display none on them, except for the ones on top, which have flex, because they're actually used. So now this is uh, much better for, for, the, for the memory. Cool. Um, what is that? We don't have music anymore, so let's start. Um, I don't know what should we listen to. Um, this sounds like a nice mix. Let's try this. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we have this. Uh, we have the data. Uh, what I would like to do is make those dots a little bit bigger. Um, but actually not bigger, but um, let's see. I want the area uh, in which I, when I go to the, when I go to hover over them, I want the area to be a little bit bigger uh, in which I can hover. So we're going to do a wrapper. Uh, yeah, actually, I wonder if I, if we can do that. Yeah, I think we can. But actually, no, we should put something inside of it. Um, let's see. Say twenty one pixels, twenty one. Um, so it'd be minus eight pixels, and left is going to be the same. So I'm, tr I'm thinking, uh, I'm trying to 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 center it. Let's make this uh, RGB. Um, Or actually no, let's make it to 255. Because it's semi-transparent, so it's gonna be fine. And here when we create a dot, uh, we create a dot and then um what did I call that? Yeah, this. Let's see if this uh, if this works. I think because this uh, this new element is a is a child of the of the dot, we should get uh, so whenever we're on it, yeah. Even though we're we're not on the dot itself, we're on this. We are still uh, triggering the hover. And I just make them. Um, let's see. Oh, that's gonna look nice. Um, this should be. I just put no. Uh, ah, come on, let's not be cheap. Uh, let's put sixteen pixels. Let's put twenty-one. God damn it. Let's put twenty-one. Um, and here I can do dot. Over dot I can actually make a border um one pixel solid this. I can make it. Ah, god damn it! I have to order with. Yeah, one pixel. Ah, oh, it doesn't have border style, but it has border color, which is this. So let's get rid of those. There we go. Uh, one pixel is way too small. Two pixels. Yeah, this looks fine. Awesome. Let's try to add. Uh, can I do this? Uh, post. Oh, I can't. Actually, I'm pretty sure I can do something like this.
Okay, never mind. Um. Oh, actually, that doesn't matter because I can't have fancy backgrounds. I wanted to add some lines, uh, some vertical lines from each point to to the bottom, but uh, actually I can't. At least not like like I intended to. Okay. So you have hover effects, kind of. We don't have yet transitions. Uh, no, in this version of Unity, we don't have transitions. I might shift this over a bit. Um, let's do that actually. Uh, so, so the first point is not right on the edge here. Okay. Um, not here. Here. So. Let's add a plus one there. Actually, I have to reopen it. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Cool. Now let's add the the second uh, the second line. Let's see how it looks with that. Um, where would that be? Oh, I have another thing here. If this or uh, uh, y equals to this, times scale has to be less than the height. Because now if we have a curve that goes up before it goes to the right, we should also stop it. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right here. I get the y value. Multiply it by the scale, and then I make sure that it's less than the height. Okay, so what I was saying was, let's add another extrapolator here. Uh, this is gonna be for the cost. Instead of multiplier here, we're gonna get the cost. Uh, and this is not gonna work because I have to cast this as a load yeah now we should have two two lines actually they're gonna be right on top of each other or they're not gonna appear at all that's that's a way to do it I was not expecting that. I was really expecting to have... Uh, probably the the new... Um, the new rule I've added. Uh, I think this is... AND. Well, this is less than the editor width AND. The Y is less than the... Oh no! This should be while well, this is less than zero. Yeah. Um, the the coordinate system in the UI toolkit is the 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 zero zero uh, point is at the left top corner and then it goes positive in the Y when you go down. That's the same uh, the same way the it's is done uh, on the web. So so in a web browser it's the same idea. The, the top left corner uh, has a coordinate uh, of zero, zero, and then it goes, and when we go down, the Y uh, goes up. 
So now we should see those. Or not. <laughs> um, the fuck? Now I'm confused. Okay, let's make sure that this was this is the problem. So let's comment this. And let's try it again. I don't have water anymore. I'll have to go to the to the kitchen. Okay, so that was not the problem. Uh what's the problem then? Oh, never mind. Now it doesn't work because I'm not I don't have a Y value anymore. There we go. Let's try to make the the cost. So one, two, four, seven. This should make it exponential. Well, it is exponential, but quite. Uh, it's going quite quick up. But yeah, it works. Uh, let's try to do it with this. Let's put a one here. Uh, no, one at the end. One, two. Let's keep this uh, linear. There we go. Now that I think about it, I think I want to have um, I have to have a name for each uh, extrapolator so I can add it here. It's only necessary for the UI, but uh, I think it's gonna make things much more clearer. So uh, let's try to add that. Um, but actually, I can just add it to the to the to this. Yeah, let's add it here. So. Uh, create a pub, public, public class. Um, Capulator data. Public extrapolator, extrapolator, public string um, name. Public string um, horizontal axis name and vertical axis name. So now, here instead of passing it uh, an array of extrapolators, I'm going to pass in an array of this type of stuff and I'm gonna get my extrapolators and other stuff from that extrapolator dot extrapolator actually let's re let's rename this to data Like so. Now here we can make our stuff. So um, Uh, new name. Uh, this is gonna be 
multiplayer. Uh, horizontal axis is level. And vertical axis is multiplayer. Okay. And now in the Explorer, we have to use those names. So here, instead of level, we're going to use data.horizontal axis name. And for the value, data.vertical axis name. And um, here, we're going to write um, data.name. Let's try it. Actually, I'm not sure about this. You might not use the name though. There we go, the level and the multiplier. Cool. So now we have a way to debug this, uh, the, the, the data in here, when we have the is infinite button pressed. Which actually makes me think uh, this button should only appear if is infinite is actually uh, enabled. So let's do that. Uh, let's move the target outside. If t dot is infinite and So now when I uh, uncheck this, I shouldn't have the, the button here. Come on, compile. What's taking you so long? Ah, actually, yeah, because it's in uh, it's not in production mode, but it's in debug mode. It's taking a little bit more time. No, this is excessive. Why the hell is it stuck? No, not, no. Okay, so now it's stuck. It's not actually... I mean, it might be compiling, but... I don't know what she's doing. And this this is not right. Using only uh, 90 megs of memory. That, that that doesn't seem right. All right. Looks like it's uh, uh, looks like it's dead. So you know what? I'm gonna just end the task. If it's gonna even do that. Come on. And we're going to open it again. What is this song? Oh, Patrol. I don't think I've ever listened to this. That is all bad, though.
Okay. One entity, do your thing, and um, yeah, I think. Um, almost done with this uh the only thing that i that i that i want to add are those uh um the ability to change the scale of the of the graph so let's see um upgrades this spector open what the hell Um, oh, those values have not been saved. Uh, two, four, six, and one point eight one. Oh yeah, uh, we have to still do this. Whenever I change this, I have to update the editor somehow. Okay, yeah, this is nice. This is the cost. And this is the multiplier. Yeah, this is nice. I may change the, the title of this. We actually have the name of the the upgrade we're, we're um, working on or where we've uh, opened this from. So I think I'm going to do that. Because as I said, I want to have multiples. Uh... Actually, no, let's keep the name. I might um, have a way of disabling certain uh, uh, lines, but sometime in the future. Uh, where is the name? Here. So let's add a name here. String editor name. So here we can add t dot name t dot name. Uh, actually, that's it. T dot name and that's everything. So now when we create the window is tower health upgrade definition. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, I still want to throw this at the end, just so we have an so you have an idea what this is actually. There we go. And actually, I might. Um... Ah, how do I do that? Um... Let's go to the upgrade editor, I guess. Here. Um... This. I want to do this. Uh, I might just be able to do this uh, from here though. Public string, nice name. So no, let's import this. Uh, and this.
uh, here. No, uh, where is that? Here. T dot nice name. I just want to remove the definition at the end. So, so all our or the files uh, have this definition at the end, which should always be here, so you know exactly what this asset is about. But for this, doesn't we don't, we don't care if it's a definition. We know it's a definition. Um, so I'm just removing it. Nice. Whoa. Now all I uh, all I want to do is add a bar at the top, which is going to have uh, some controls on it. So let's do that. And now I'm wondering. No, I think I'm going to do it uh, from, uh, through code. Let's move those here. I should be able to just adjust uh, to adjust this from uh, from here, and um, yeah, I also have to add it to the root. Actually, let's send the root here uh, to toolbar, not rule bar, like so. Actually, let's put this here. So toolbar, and we're gonna say position ab uh, absolute top zero, left zero, left zero, right zero, and height let's say 30 pixels. We're gonna have a border. Bottom width one pixel border bottom color uh I don't know what color should I uh put this uh what should I uh, have here uh but I know where to get a color from or actually no I do have a color um but I have to get it from here. This one. So this is a variable that uh, that comes from uh, or is provided by Unity, and it gets you in this case the default border color in the editor. So so why I'm using this is because uh, those variables change uh, based on um, the the theme in the editor. So right now I have a dark theme. Uh, but uh, if I would switch to the light theme, that that color would change as well, so it would look good with the light theme. So let's see. We I thought we we're gonna see something, but we are not because we're not actually calling this. So that does make sense. Uh, let's do it here. Generate toolbar, root visual element. Let's actually save this in a variable root. Let's replace replace it everywhere, like so. Let's add this at the top. Style sheet. Then we generate the toolbar. Let's put a Z index on this. It doesn't have a Z index, really. Never mind then. Um, we'll see how it looks. I just don't want to have a dots uh, on top of the toolbar. That's there we go. Uh, 
I'll have to to search for a background. I, I'd like to have the same background as this. I don't know if I can see. Um, If I can see colors. Oh. Oh damn, here are all the variables. That's that's nice. Oh but that's not really yeah, I was interesting in uh what color this uh this had. Oh, I might get, I might be able to. One trick that you can do is open a UI toolkit debugger for the UI toolkit debugger. So I might be able to get the uh, the color from here if they set it up, but apparently they did not. Damn it. Damn it. But uh, look what we're having here. Oh, uh, there is a thing called toolbar. I am stupid. Um, I totally forgot about that. God damn it, I can't access this. Really? I can't use it? Come on. Wait, 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 wait. This is not the... This doesn't look like... This doesn't look like the, the toolbar I'm, I'm looking for. Let's try to get it from here, maybe? Yeah, there we go. This is the toolbar that I want. So then I actually might not need that, that class any, uh, anymore. Let's see. Open Explorer. We have whatever this is. Actually, the code was not compiled. Let's try it again. Hey, there we go. Now, of course, uh, the, the dots are rendered on top of it. So because we don't have Z index to 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 change the their. Oh. Yep. I actually don't need any of those stuff. Actually, I needed them. Uh, I need to copy them to use them here. There we go. Now we should have 
uh, the dot for the for the plot in a separate element, and it should be, yep, uh, the, the the dots are behind the toolbar. So now what we've done instead of having let's see, instead of having the dots directly in the root, as we did before, we have them in this element, uh, and we are drawing them uh, before the toolbar. So even though, like if I hover here, you can see there's a point there. Even though there's a point there, uh, we, we don't see it because uh, we have this, uh, uh, the, the toolbar is drawn on top. Uh, one thing that we can do now, uh, because we have this extra element, uh, now that I think about it, we actually don't need to use pos position absolute. We can actually just use flex. So, Right now, the height is going to be zero for this, for 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 our uh, for our element here. Uh, I don't think uh, I don't know. Uh, this should have. Uh, I mean, for sure, it has a display of flex, right? Uh, it has a display of flex, right? Yeah, it's flex, and we have the toolbar and then the visual element. We might have to switch them around, but if we go to flex grow, we should put we should be able to put a one here. There we go. But unfortunately, we moved our toolbar down here, so we have to we'll switch them here. And then in the plot area, let's do flex grow one. So it's gonna take however much sp uh, space there is. And the dots are still drawn on top of that. Uh, what the hell? I mean, no, we can actually, um, we have overflow, right? Yeah, overflow hidden. Now, whatever is outside of this, uh, of this area is not going to be drawn. But we still have this problem. Yeah, anyway, doesn't really matter. But it's better. If if you can deal with stuff uh, without using um, position absolute, that's that's better. Because if you use position absolute for a lot of things, uh, it might be harder to manage uh, at some point. You should use position absolute uh, only when it's actually needed. Like in this example for the dots, because the dots shouldn't follow the the flow rules of uh, of the DOM here of the of the elements. I want them to be at the precise position on the screen, so uh, so it's okay that that, that they uh, that they use position absolute. But for the other elements, uh, it's not really needed. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's see. Um, Yeah, so I would like to add some some things here. So let's see what else uh, what else we have in the in the toolbar. So we have the toolbar, and I want to add two sliders. Um, or actually, I might have to add more sliders. Um, let's call it horizontal scale toolbar. Breadcrumbs, button, menu, spacer, toggle. Uh, I wonder if I can just put a slider in here or something. No. Uh, this is, yeah. Uh, 
I don't have a text for this. I would have to add. Oh, I have a label though. So horizontal scale. Um, Register value changed callback. We are getting a uh, we are getting an event. So let's save the the scales here. So private float horizontal scale. Let's put it twenty and let's have vertical scale as well. And actually let's let's also use them so let's remove this scale here so this is horizontal scale this is horizontal scale uh, this is vertical scale uh, and also let's uh, re-enable this because we've never did that uh, no like so uh, we have to fix some things this is also vertical scale and this is data dot extrapolator and we can get rid of this Okay. Cool. One, let it compile. Open Explorer, and we have a tiny, 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 tiny thing here. My dots are still not working as expected, apparently. Is this one? Yeah, it still has display none. Okay, so probably this doesn't work. Or, um, I mean, oh, I have to do this. No, I think I have to do this. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is gonna work. If it's no, if it's oh my bad, if it's it should do it if it's less than the editor height. Yeah. There we go. And this is not yet hooked up, but uh, we'll do that immediately. So here, uh, now we can say the horizontal scale is event. If, uh, event dot new value and one thing that we don't have here is what we or what we haven't specified uh, are the the ranges and I'm not sure if I can specify them or if I have to or if I just get a value between uh, zero and one I think that's that's what I'm getting so let's um, let's see. What what should be the ranges for the for this? Like between ten and what thirty forty? So times thirty plus times thirty plus ten. So between twenty and forty. Let's see. Uh, and actually, here we have to. Plot extrapolators again. Uh, root, yeah. Or no, we have to plot them in the plot area. Oh no, the root is. Oh uh, no, the root is fine. No, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa wait. I'm um, confused. No, yeah, yeah. We have to plot them in the in the plot area, and uh, it's not saved. Let's save this. Private visual element. Plot area. So here, instead of root, we're gonna use the plot area. This is actually like this. Oh, 
there's one more error here yeah like so let's see if it works uh yeah we have to pick a new window hey there we go I mean, this is so small. We have to make this uh, this bigger, but uh, but it works. So let's see if I say uh, shrink one here. Doesn't work. Does it have a min width? Yes, it does. Can I say min width of zero? Yes. Okay. Um, a slider. Let's say. Uh, min min width is gonna be zero. Um, flex um, shrink it's gonna be one. Uh, margin right. We're gonna have. Let's put some space there. Let's put eight pixels. And. We're gonna do this for now, and uh, we also have to make this way, way, way bigger the, the the slider itself. But let's see. The hell. Uh, okay, I have. I think I have to. Yes, yeah, so I put the class on the slider itself. I have to put it on the label though. Let's try to do it here. Um, oh, we don't have empty child. We do have label. Yeah. Can I do something like this? Oh, yes, I can. Oh, that's nice. Because that uh, enables me to do this. So a, a visual element directly in the slider, I want it to have a width of 150 pixels. Uh, psh, pixels. Hey, there we go. I I think we have too much uh, range with this. Um, so I might just keep it between ten, uh, uh, ten and twenty. And also, um, actually, let's put the range here up top. So private uh, vector vector three, no vector two. Range. between 10 and 20. Range, uh, no horizontal scale divided by this dot y minus this dot x. Let's actually save this. Um, So 
So now when we create the editor, the, the slider should be uh, at, the, at the end. Uh, what's happening here? Oh, I think it was an error from uh, from before. Oh, it's not actually at the end. This feels like much more than we actually wrote twenty there. Yeah, between ten and twenty. Oh, what? What's going on here? Um, let's uh, do a console log of this. Let's do it here. Sure. Uh, or I mean, not console log, but log. Okay, so we have 20 here. Holy shit, okay. So uh, the, the value is not between 0 and 1, that's for sure. So there is a way to set the, the, the range for this for this for this component. And I and I have to find out how. Oh I'm stupid. Here's it. Wait. Oh so this is the range. Wait. Okay, so this is not no. So so there is a there should be a way of setting the of setting the range. I mean. I can just use the internet because that's why it's for, right? Oh, I'm stupid. It's in the <laughs> okay, it's in the actual uh it's here. Okay, so this is x, this is y and direction is horizontal. Okay. So I don't have to do this. I don't need those values. Everything's fine. Okay, let's try it now. If we get the horizontal scale, then I'm gonna do the the vertical scale as well. Yeah, there we go. That's it. I may just make it um so between twenty and thirty. And then we're gonna do um uh, also values uh up. Well, for the vertical, I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think it's fine for now. Let's do the vertical one as well.
There we go. Actually, for the vertical, I might do uh, the scale. Uh, I might open up the scale more. Absolutely terrified. I mean, it doesn't matter, but. I mean, it doesn't actually matter because on top of the vertical, yeah, this is nice. Hello. <laughs> I think uh, we get some, uh, we get to see some limitations here. We've just kept the value. Where is 109 here? Oh, never mind. It is there. Oh, okay. My bad. Look at that. 175, 175. Okay. So, so we have this, we have the scale. One other thing that I want is One other thing that I want is to be able to move up and down and left and right, um, like basically add an offset to, to the whole thing. But actually, actually, I'm not sure how how important that is, because I mean I can make this window so big. I mean, no, I think I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to keep it like this for now. So you have, you can play with the scale. I, uh, um, I could uh, make it for the vertical go even, even lower. So actually let's go to a value of one here, or maybe that's, that's a bit too much. Um, We can see more points because for curves like this, they just shoot off um, very fast because they're exponential. There we go. We can see up to level 75 for this curve. So I think that's fine. I don't think that's a, that's a big problem. Uh, what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to add some offset there. So instead of doing that um, based on the scale, I'm going to add, I'm just going to add some padding like here. Um, let's see. Um, const float padding is going to be 20. Uh, so here, instead of doing this plus one, we're just going to add some padding. And here we're going to subtract this padding. There we go. Uh, well, for Y, it doesn't really work because, um, so for X, they're always, the, the, the first point is always at zero, but for for the Y, uh, for the Y value, it's not, but at least it's not, uh, um, 
glued to the to the to the bottom part of the window, so it's a bit up. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, one other thing that I want to add is the ability to disable uh, some of those the, some of those lines. Um, and we're gonna do that by adding a couple of buttons, or not a couple of buttons, but a button for each uh, uh, extrapolator. So let's do that for each. Uh, for each data, actually, extrapolator data, we're gonna uh, button a button. New, actually, let's copy this toolbar um, toolbar button. Yeah, can we add a name? But no, but we can add this. Uh, here we can add uh, whatever happens when you click the button. That's just a, a simpler way of doing it. Uh, button the text equals data dot no extrapolated data dot name and toolbar add button. And here, uh, toolbar add uh, toolbar spacer. I saw that that's a thing, so let's try to use it. Uh, here, actually, I'm not sure what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna just add um, private bool show plot. Uh, not bool array. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did for the color. So this we're gonna do something like this, except uh, we don't want to return a color, but we're gonna return true here. And now that I think about it, I don't need this for. I don't want this for each. I want this to be a four because I need the index. So here I want to show plot of index uh, to be um, to basically to invert this. Let's um, save this index. So. And let's actually use the data. So uh, here, if not show plot of i, let's continue. Okay, that should do it. Let's try it. Yeah, we forgot to add uh, uh, to call the redraw function for the plot. Okay, let's do that. Load extrapolators. There you go. This doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, I mean, I don't know what it does. I thought it's just going to add the space there, but apparently it did not. Um, actually, no, it did add the space, but between this and the button. Okay. Um, there's one thing that I want to do, or that I've seen here. Um, oh, never mind. 
I thought I saw something, but uh, it wasn't. Never mind. Yeah, so this is it. I think this is gonna be uh, all that we're gonna do for uh, for this view. So you can see pretty far. So for, I mean, this curve, which is exponential, I can see up to level 75 and four. And actually there's not even the whole story because I can uh, make it even taller. So now I can see the level 81. And for a linear, uh, for a linear uh, graph, I can see what's this level 170, which is like, yeah, that's uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of data. But then you can you can play with this, so you can get to, to the to the values uh, at the bottom. You can disable uh, uh, you, you can disable the lines uh, or lines that you don't don't want to look at. In case there are, because here there are two lines, but there might be a situation where you will have uh, uh, more lines. So, so it's uh, I think it's a it's a good idea to be able to 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 remove them in case you don't want to look at them. Yeah. Now the only thing that we have to do, I guess, is and I'm not sure how to do that though. Um, I want to um, I want to be able uh, to change values in here. And have this uh, this window update, but I'm not entirely sure how to do that. Uh, I'll have to see how if I can cache some 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 references to some stuff. Anyway, uh, we'll have we'll have we'll, ah, we'll find a way. That uh, that's not a problem. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna take a short break, like I don't know, two three minutes, and then I'm gonna be back, and we're gonna continue with this. So uh, stay tuned.
Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, so what I was saying. Oh yeah, so we have to change the data whenever or to to replot the the graphs whenever we change the data. So let's see how we can do that. I got my phone is going crazy. Let's. Um. Okay, let's see. So the first thing that I want is here in the editor. I'm wondering if I, if I can uh, cache uh, I can cache a reference to the actually yeah no yeah yeah I want to cache a reference to the to the editor so let's try to do that first so private this And here in init, uh, I would like to return it. Return window. Now I can get the instance. Now I can do the following thing. Um, I can, let's see. But I have to go. I said this is a void, which is not correct. Um, let's get this here too. So now, here's my idea 
this might be totally wasteful but it might work at the beginning so we can do this we can basically regenerate the extra extrapolator um but as i said this uh, this is uh, this might be quite uh, i mean no this is wasteful um what i um what i think i should do is Yeah, what I should do is have some um, some way of detecting if the values uh, if those values have changed, and if they did, uh, then uh, then I should do this. Not every time the editor is rendered. Okay, so I, but but anyway, for for now it should work. Um, Uh, no, here I want to make a, a, a method. So it's set up. I want to do actually a public void uh, re render um, and not generate plot area, but yeah, here plot extrapolators. This. So after we modify this, we're going to say re render. So let's see how this works. Now, the the only wasteful thing that we do is, of course, we're creating a lot of objects or a, a lot of instances because we create, we're creating those classes, and uh, and also, no, actually, that's the only wasteful thing that and, and, and no, uh, we actually we are recalculating the values. Uh, uh, We're calculating the values even though <laughs> it looks so fine. Damn. It's nice. It's actually nice. So I'm controlling the multiplier. I transform this uh, from multiplayer to to a percentage like I have here. But man, this is this is nice.
Oh. Okay, so I was trying to do something. So as you can see, the the graph starts right here and then it goes up. So, so what I was trying to do is see if I make this window very large, if I would get the, 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 the curve to come back down. But because of the way we've, impl we've implemented this, even though, uh, as you can see, the curve starts to to flatten out, so it, so eventually it's gonna it's gonna come back down. Even though we've it's gonna do that uh, because we've added the the um, we've added that check where if uh, if we go above uh, above this limit if, uh, above this line, uh, we're gonna stop drawing the point. Uh, because we've done that, uh, then we don't get uh, the, the 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 curve uh, to continue, even even if it drops after. So yeah. I may just have to remove that, even though. It's not really necessary, but I I I, I want to see if that's how the how that's gonna look. So we're gonna let's see. We still have to do this, so I'm gonna put it here, and then I'm gonna comment this again. Let's put a semicolon there. So let's wait for this to compile, and um, let's see if that curve uh, comes back down. We should be able to test it right away because the values are still there, so we're gonna just see it. I mean, right now it doesn't look like much, but we should be able to. Um, yeah, there we go. I mean, right here it comes back down um, quite quick, but uh, yeah. Anyway, it works. So if I if it's cut off. And you have the window a little bit bigger, you're gonna see it uh, come back down after a while. So that is nice. Actually, I think I'm gonna keep it because because it, even if it's not something extreme, like drag uh, making the window be larger than one one monitor, uh, you're you can still make it like yeah, this is uh, less than what uh, than my monitor resolution, and I can see this. So I think. Uh, I think this is okay to to not put back this uh, this check. So if it goes back, uh, uh, well, actually, no. So the thing is, no, no, we're gonna keep this because if we get a, a curve that's exponential, that's gonna just kill the kill my. Or not my PC, but it's gonna kill whatever uh, PC there is. Um, because if it's exponential, it's just gonna go. It's gonna go if, uh, higher and higher with each step. Uh, and yeah, yeah, it might uh, just blow up and just crash. Because um, the thing is. We're not gonna have those kinds of curves in the game, so um, you'll only be able to have a linear, uh, linear. Uh, yeah, the data should be, uh, can be linear or it can uh, go up, but never come back down, because it doesn't make sense. You don't want to have a, a an upgrade that's gonna go up, and then at some point, okay, so it's not gonna. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, at some point it's gonna just uh, give you the, the multiplier that it gives you. It's gonna just be worse than the than the previous level. So that doesn't make sense. So uh, yeah, yeah, this is not actually gonna be possible. I'm gonna put a checks in the in here in the editor, so you won't be able to 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 make those kinds of curves. So yeah, I'm actually going to to reintroduce this. Oh yeah, 
then we can uh, actually see it in action. So now I've opened it at here. Let's make this small, small. And now if I go down, the whole line disappears. <laughs> yeah, so this is how we can check the, 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 the that check actually works. Yeah. Cool. Now actually I wonder if this should be the, the default view for this. I mean the uh, the default scale. Because now that I think about it, having them, what, like this? There's too much space between those. I mean, I should be able to go uh, to go in on those uh, lower levels or uh, on those first levels. But this looks more interesting to me than being zoomed in. So I just make this the default, actually. So let's do that. Uh, instead of having, so here would be uh, horizontal would be 10 and this would be one uh, for the vertical. This still works. Um, yeah, one thing that I might have to do is I might have to use a logarithmic scale instead of a, what is this, linear scale, whatever. I don't know how to do that, though. But, uh, I might have to do that. Otherwise, you can't really. If the curve is uh, is really aggressive, you can't really check it for values that are, yeah, for yeah, like this. As you can see, I can see only to level thirty six. I can see a little bit more if I made a window bigger, but uh, not that much. Yeah, another two levels. Yeah, that's not a lot. One other thing that I want to do is I'd like to have lines or or not lines, but or no, yeah, I think I want lines. So I want lines to see. Um, what uh, what dot from here corresponds to to the dot from from down here, you know? Because those have a correspondence. So this level eighteen corresponds to what this one, you know? So I'd like to have some vertical lines uh, between those two. Yeah, and I think I'm gonna do a similar setup that I've done for the dots. I'm just gonna cache the lines. Cached lines. Next line indexed. We don't care about the toolbar. We don't care about, let's make this an expression body. 
we don't care about this. I actually care about the setup or not right now. We care about this though. Create dot get dot hide dots. Uh, we're gonna have something similar, but it's gonna be pri uh, private. Create new line. Add, uh, add class uh, list line um, root add line add uh, line and then cache lines dot add line and then return the line um, let's pick some regions here region uh, dots um, lines Let's make a similar function for lines now that we have this uh, create new line. One hundred lines should be enough. Okay, and we need something similar to those. I'm just gonna copy them over. Get line. Now the thing is, um, I don't know how many lines I should draw. Oh, no, not not how many lines I should draw. Um, or hmm. uh, I'm, I'm going to explain uh, in a second. Uh, Okay, so um, my idea was to add. Come on. My idea was to add the lines. Let's say from this point to this point, like only this. But to do this, I would need to know the values of those points. Um, actually, that's not that hard to do. I will need some special functions or, or special functions implemented in extrapol on the extrapolator. Yeah, I'm gonna add some uh, some methods here that is gonna be internal. So if it's in the editor, public, and um. Yeah, so I, I want to know how, how many dots there are. 
and I want a similar function to get value at. So public float get value. Actually, no. Um, or I, I I thought about making a, a method that would get me the value uh, only if it only if it exist existed uh, so and uh, it wouldn't do or you wouldn't extrapolate in case that value was not there and just give me like the last value or something which yeah, now that I say, yeah, 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 I think I'm gonna do that. So get value at int index. Um, let's put internal in front of it. I can do data of math f. Uh, I want the minimum of index and internal data puts count minus one, like so. Okay, let's put them in the plot area. Um, I don't need this anymore. Let's get the, the let's get this in here. So that uh, line is gonna have a width of one pixel. The height is gonna depend on. I'm just. I'm gonna calculate the height in uh, in the code, and it's gonna have a background color of RGBA, two five five two five five two five five zero point two maybe. Okay. Private void um, generate lines. So I have to go max index is going to be data dot maximum of d uh, dot extrapolator dot internal data point count. So I want to see how many points there are. And I want minus one as the maximum index. So I'm going to do a for loop. Um, equal zero x i less than equal than this. 
um, I plus plus. I might make this uh, X actually. So that's the X position. Uh, and now that I think about it, this should be a, or this should have. Position absolutely. Okay. So let's get the line. Get line. Uh, plot area. Sure. Right. That's what I need. Uh, let's see what I've done for the dots. No, I've done the root, which is which is the plot area. Okay. I feel like I don't have to to pass this around anymore. This route, I mean, not for for those things, any anyway, at least. Um, lot area. Don't pass it here. Go in the dots and say. You don't need the root here. Just put it in the plot area. You don't need the root here. Oh man, we're getting rid of so much code. Uh, create new. This doesn't matter anymore. This doesn't matter anymore. Get rid of this. Get rid of this also. There you go. Just getting my line. Uh, let's make a Okay, so we generate the lines here. So we get the line. We want to know what's the highest and the lowest point. So, uh, uh, low equals, so we go through all the data. We get the minimum of D D dot extrapolator dot internal get value at uh, x and we get the high which is the maximum of uh, the same thing actually uh, sorry I, I've just seen the the chat yeah, so, um, yeah, I think it compiles. So we have the, the explorer for the, for looking at, um, at the values for the, for the, for the upgrades. So you set up the values in the, in this, in this file, which is a, a I mean, this file, which is an upgrade definition. And you have a view uh, to see um, how those values uh, will change uh, with each level. So because this this is this is marked as an infinite upgrade, uh, you define a couple of levels by hand, and then the code is just gonna uh, take it from there and generate the the next points. So you can just uh, change this value. And then uh, uh, see how uh, how the values react to, to those changes in this nice plot. And then you can just go over and hover over any any point and see. Okay, at at level 102, the multiplier is gonna be 489. And then you can look down here somewhere, and the cost is gonna be. 102. So um, yeah, we have this editor. 
you can zoom in on stuff. I mean, actually not zoom in, but uh, you can uh, increase the scale of the, I mean, you know, the, the, the space between the points. So you can look at the, at the, at the values right at the start before all the crazy from all the crazy stuff from the expansion you can disable curves if you want to to only focus on a, on a single one and that's kind of it and yeah you have this uh, this ability of uh, being able to change the value in here and the uh, the graph just updates on the fly And what I'm trying to do now is add lines between those the points at the top and uh, the ones at the bottom, vertical lines, I mean. So you know, if you look at the point, you'll be able to see uh, to what point at another curve it corresponds. So you don't have to like, okay, this is level 83, let's try to find level 83 here. Oh, no, I'm on over and you go here. Right? You just have a line and you can visually see uh, where it goes. So that's what I'm trying to calculate right now. So var, um, so I'm going through all the all the values that that I mean all the all the levels that we have displayed on the on the on the screen. And for each extrapolator, we're gonna get the lowest value, or yeah, we're gonna get the lowest value that we have on the screen and the highest value. And we're just gonna draw a line between those uh, those two. So let's see. Um, one thing that I I know I need to do is where is that? Um, this padding. I have to take this out of here. Or hmm. no, yeah, yeah. We're gonna take it out. And um, let's put it somewhere. Uh, let's put it like, I don't know, here. Um, oh, thanks. Uh, glad you like it. Let's do this. We're also gonna need uh, those uh, things. Actually, let's yeah, let's copy this, and we're just gonna remove the the things that we don't need. So like this, this we don't need. So we have the X, we don't have the Y, uh, because the Y is actually the which one should we do? Let's do the high value. Oh, actually, we don't even need to do this. Uh, to oh no, never mind. No, we have to do this. So this is top. This is the left, and we also need to do the height, which is gonna be what's gonna be the height. Uh, it's gonna be the high minus the low. Uh, times the vertical scale minus the, no, we don't care about the plot padding. No, it's like this. So now, we can just assign those values. Not width, but height. The top left height. Um, could it be that everything that we need? Not sure. If this is everything that we need to do, that's going to be nice. That's going to be nice.
Let's try it. <gasps> oh my god. Uh, this kind of works. Holy shit, it, it almost works. <laughs> Damn. We're still getting the... Oh yeah, we're getting the values because... Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because they are available because they were calculated already. Yeah, that's not a problem because... Uh... But when this looks dope. Uh, why are these the same color almost? I have to make the, the colors more random. Oh! Actually, never mind the. Oh, they're not drawing because it's uh, they're one. Uh, I think they're because they're one. Uh, well, one pixel thick. Let's try to do two pixels. No. It's keeping some values sometime. I don't know why. But man, they're, they're they're actually connecting the 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 the, the points at the top with the ones at the bottom. It's not centered yet, but uh, I'm gonna center them. So let's see, how can we center them? Um, maybe. Actually, I'm gonna keep it with the one pixel width, and then I'm gonna say margin. Or can I do more? I think I can do margin. Margin top, uh, let's put the pixels and margin left to pixels. Hell yeah! Now they go from the center. But I'm not sure why it skips values. So I, I don't know why, why it does that. Why does it do that though? Because it looks pretty consistent, um, like it's it looks like it's keeping values for some reason. Let's make this. Uh... What? Why the hell it's keeping values? Looks like it's alternating between them whenever I resize. This is so strange. This doesn't make any sense. Why the hell does it do that? Uh, I should try to debug it. I not be able to because the, there might be. I mean, I know there are a lot of uh, lines. Oh my god! There are. A lot of lines, like a lot. Is the number increasing? Oh. Oh shit. I think my cache failed. But how so? So I'm doing the exactly same thing. It's basically the exact same thing. Why doesn't it work? Next line. I'm adding the line to the cache. I'm using the line from the cache. I'm not resetting this anywhere. Not resetting this anywhere. And that's a problem. Um, 
Yeah, here I should say this is zero. Yeah, so even though I'm putting them in a cache, uh, I'm not resetting that counter whenever I re-render, so I just uh, try to get uh, more and more and more lines. I'm just basically creating lines. There we go. Okay, so there are basically just too many too many lines, and uh, the renderer uh, didn't uh, was not able to keep up. Hell yeah! You can you can look at the line a bit and just see that uh, it goes to where it's supposed to. Are you sure there's no? There is in there is the index. Let's put this. Uh, what? I'm still gonna try it. I'm. I remember that maybe they they, they might not have it yet. Yeah, no, they they don't have uh, the index ordering yet. But uh, not a big problem. I mean, for this case, it is. But uh, I mean, it is a problem, not a big problem. Not sure if, even if you can see the the problem uh, on the stream. The, so the idea is that. The line goes from the center of this dot to the center of these dots, and depending on the color of the dot, you see the line passing in front of the dot just a tiny bit. Like there's like two pixels, two three pixels there, and it's just it just annoys me. And I can't put unfortunately I can't put the the line I can I can put the lines be, behind the the. the Oh, but I can. Oh, never mind. I just need more elements. Um, dots, stash. What what do I want to do this? Um, so here I'm creating those uh, this plot area. I'm actually gonna go and create some elements for putting uh, the dots and the lines. So I, the idea is. Um, Stash. Um, the idea is that uh, now I can order those elements and then uh, render the lines uh, behind the dots, but I can. Uh, Generate the lines. I mean, generate the actual elements after I generate the dots. It, it, it's a bit, it's a bit weird, but um, I have to generate the lines after the dots because the dots are driving the, the, the generation of the extrapolated data. And for the lines, I'm using that data if it's there, and if it's not, I'm not gonna do any extrapolation. So I have to uh, create the lines after. So now, what I can do is 
and actually no i have to change the order of this because that's the whole idea so now the lines i can put them instead of directly in the plot area i'm going to put them in the line stash and the dots i'm going to put them in the you guessed it the dot stash so now theoretically uh the line should be behind the the dots hopefully yeah yeah now 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 that looks better uh and now uh, i don't like the circle anymore i mean it's not that i don't like it it's too let's make it like this yeah Cool. And now we can easily follow the, the line and go to, to the value on the other side. Yeah. Awesome. So now that we have this, I think um, I think that's everything uh, everything that I needed for uh, I may have to make them alternate colors. Uh, uh, but uh, I think this is everything that I that I needed for the editor. Okay, and when we generate the lines, um, here I'm gonna say if x mod two is equal to zero, and then line add add this class to the line. So now um, the lines should have slightly different colors um, when you go from one to the other, yeah. And because they're only one pixel thick. Oh no, I can't do that. Oh, never mind. Why the hell does it stop uh, having alternate values here? What? I think I think we're drawing away way too many points. And uh, no, I mean not not points, but elements in general. I think uh, we're seeing the the limit of the system. So I might just make it a uh, a bit smaller. I mean, I increase the oh damn, that looks like shit. Uh, let's make the horizontal scale. Um, yeah. I mean, actually, the vertical line doesn't matter, or the vertical scale doesn't matter, the horizontal scale matters. 
So we're just gonna keep this here. Yeah, let's just keep the horizontal scale at 20. And the vertical scale we're gonna keep at 1, like so. And then if you want more points, um, you just mess with this, but you might end up not seeing everything correctly the further you go. Yeah, the lights I, the lights are, are no more uh, no longer uh, aligned. Ah, <sighs> actually, that was not a problem. Um, Cool. Yeah, that should do it. Uh, yeah, this is not uh, that great. Um, let's see what we can do about that. Data where the, uh, actually I don't care about the, the data itself, but the index, that's what I care about. Because I want to go to show plot of i. If I should show it, I'm going to show it. So here, extrapolators. Oh, no. Yeah, sure, no, like this. Or actually, let's call this data end. Array. And we're gonna say here if data dot length is uh, less less than two, we're just gonna return or exit early because if there's only one line, uh, we don't need lines. We don't need the the vertical lines. So that's that. So now whenever I remove one of this, uh, they disappear. Let's add another line. Let's add, uh, I, I don't have any more values for the upgrades, so but let's just add a, um, uh, some random line here. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's just duplicate the, let's just duplicate this maybe. I mean, uh, like a normal person. Let's put a two in front of it. Uh, what else? This. Let's put a two there. The two. There's a two. Let's just do it like this. Doesn't really matter. Because all I care about is uh, actually changing the data here. So instead of the multiplayer, let's multiply this by 1.2 or something. Now I'm going to get a new curve. And... Uh... Oh no, I didn't have to play. Uh, here. Oh, I... Uh, have to also add it. There we go. We have the points and then we have the lines. Uh, 
cool. This looks nice. Yeah, let's uh, remove everything because we don't need this line. This is this is. Uh, it was just for testing. Okay. I think we're actually done with this uh, with this editor. Kind of breaks after a while. I don't know why those lines don't show up as they should, but uh, it theoretically should look. Uh, because there are there are lines for each of the dots, but they just don't have that class on them. Oh no, I'm stupid. I know exactly what's happening. Um, uh, yeah, those those lines actually do have that that class on them. That's the problem. The problem is, yeah. So I'm adding this class here. But when I'm reusing the, the 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 elements from the cache, I'm not uh, removing it. So here, when I hide the lines, I should also remove uh, remove from class list. I should remove this class in case it is it is there, because I don't want to reuse uh, the when I want to reuse the line. I don't have I don't need to have that class on it. There we go. That's more like it. Okay, so that was a bug. That was all me. Which means that I can get back to my scale of 10 for the horizontal axis. So I can have this view from the beginning. Like so I wanted to say. Yeah, there we go. Nice. God damn. So I allocated three hours for this task. And we're already at four hours and uh, 16 minutes. <laughs> And we haven't even finished. And I think I'm going to split this task into two. So this is going to be only the editor part. And then the runtime part I'm going to do next week. Um, yeah. Because we we still have to, 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 to get the data at runtime. But we don't have that yet. Okay, so I think we're going to do one final thing for this, and then uh, that's going to be the stream. Um, so uh, we're still we're still doing that uh, awful thing in here. So whenever the editor, or th uh, this one, uh, uh, refreshes, um, we are uh, re-rendering this editor, which is not that nice. So you should only do this when the values inside change. So um, yeah, that's what we should do. Not sure how yet, but uh, that's what we have to do. So we can get rid of everything because we're only going to focus on this. And actually, we're going to uh, look at uh, this as well. 
So what I want is whenever the multiplier or the cost changes, I want to re-render the editor in case if it's in case it's open. So how do we do this? How do we do this? Um I think I'm going to save something in this uh upgrade level. Yeah. So I need something here, so that 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 at least that I know. Um, uh, public. Um, let's call it int version. Or uh, yeah, it's gonna be public version it's going to be zero by default public uh, public void in uh, increment version 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 plus plus oh yeah my bad like this and here we're going to use Odin and say on value changed when the value changes please call this method on value changed please call this method and now that I think about it I wonder if on value change does it affect children <gasps> oh my god this is awesome don't actually need to do that hack I think oh my god or at least I don't have to do it here holy shit oh my god um whoa on value changed um name of uh oh my god i can't believe in pre uh, in increment version include children yes please so basically what what include children means it it should go into this data type and it should also listen for everything that's in here so now we shouldn't be able to uh, we shouldn't need those things and what uh, what do we need to do here yeah here uh, private int last version uh, rendered version it's gonna be zero uh, no let's put it at minus one Let's say that minus one is like we never render this, so we should render it. So if uh, instance is not null and um, uh, rendered version or no, um, t dot version is different from the render version, we're going to render. And then we're going to save the version. So now what should happen is. Uh, yeah, sure. This should be like so. So what should happen is I can do a login here. Render version this. I should be able to go here 
And when I have the editor open, okay, so I have one. If I put the three in here, holy shit, it only changes when I do this. A. That is nice. That is actually nice. And now that the thing is that whenever I go back, that uh, that oh, it actually cached that. Oh, interesting. I was not expecting to see the. Oh, this might be a problem. Or is it? Um. Let's pick another uh another another one of these. That's 18, but if I modify this, oh, I don't have the reference to this editor anymore. I only have the reference to this one. Oh no, I don't have any reference. Ah oh, shit. So yeah, the verses are the verses are different, but uh, I lose the reference to the to the editors. So I guess I have to get the the reference back. I can't I can't cache it. I have to get it. I have to get the the editor somehow. So I think I'm going to get it through the name. Because I don't see any other uh, way of doing it. So this doesn't work. I mean, it works. Uh, it works until you want to. Uh, until you want to. Uh, what do you call it? Until you change the, the the selected object in here. Let's uh, replace those. So I'm gonna have next to the init uh, method. I'm gonna have a public static. With the name, it has the first bit uh, the render of type T, which is currently on the screen. The thing is, if it doesn't exist, I would like it to not create it. There's the thing. Yeah. Well, one thing that I can do is have a static uh, field in here, which saves for each editor name, it's going to save uh, the editor. Uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save a reference to the editor here, so be stat something like public, static, um, or not public, but private. Private static dictionary um, from string to this. Um, 
instances new dictionary so whenever I create a new but I can check here actually so if now actually it doesn't matter no I'm just gonna do it and then I'm gonna say this dot add editor name uh, and then uh, the window and here I'm gonna return this uh, no if it has go on contains it's contains contains key editor name then I'm gonna do this of editor name otherwise gonna be null Let's make this an expression body. And then uh, one other thing that I want to do is <clears throat> on destroy. Um, Um, I have to find it and then remove it. Um, or I can save the the editor name. I mean the uh, the one that I get from here. Ah. Uh, yeah, sure, let's save this. Uh, editor. Okay. That I've seen. Try get value, editor name, uh, out var, uh, out var insta instance. I get uh, and the editor name is gonna be t dot nice name there we go now it should work again. So I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna open this. Oh, I see some nulls in here. Oh, I also don't have this, which is actually. Might be worse. Uh, 
so I don't have references to this. So even though I have the window I, and I can re-render it, I can't assign back data. I mean, I can if I just create new stuff, like, which is not that bad actually, because there's like not a lot, of, not a lot of stuff here. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is this is what I have to do. So here, instead of doing this, let's copy this back here. Let's copy this whole thing here. Extrapolated data, yes, please. Actually, we can do it directly here. And I have to do a, a method in the window to set the, the extrapolators again. Ah. So much work, so much work, but it is totally worth it. Uh, no. Uh, with this. Okay, so I can get this, plop it in here, add the T value, that's it. And then I get rid of this. Get rid of this as well. Render width. I have to do those, this whole thing, or no, this thing. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to reset the colors if you do this. We don't need to do this because, yeah, actually, we don't need to do this. We only need to uh, reassign the data because. Uh, we're not going to change the number of extrapolators that we have. We're going to change the data from them. So, so we're going to have the same number of extrapolators. Okay. So we have one. We go there. We go back. A, and we can still change it. Now we can open another one. And I can modify this one. Then I can go back to this one, modify this one. Yeah, so I can totally have uh, two windows at the same time open. Man, this grows so fast. What's this like level 36? Yeah, but it works. That's the, that's the thing. 
And here, if it finds it, it's just going to focus it. So that's nice. Oh, wait, oh, one thing that I haven't checked. Does the button disappear when I... Yeah, nice. So if this is not enabled, the button disappears. Cool. I think this is it. I think that's this is it for today. I'm quite tired. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed working in this. This is actually f quite fun. Quite fun to do. Cool. Okay, so um, yeah, next time we're gonna work on uh, again on the upgrades, but uh, we're gonna actually implement the the infinite levels into the game, and probably I'm gonna make it so we can actually buy them in the game because right now, even though you can create them. Uh, you can't actually, you don't have any UI for actually buying them. So I might just add something for that. Um, but let's see, yeah, let's see what we've done uh, today. So we've changed the UI, we've made it look a little bit uh, nicer. With, I mean, this still looks like shit. Oh, that is right, that looks like shit. Uh, because, wait, why does that look like shit? Oh, now it looks fine. Okay, I don't know why that looked like shit. Okay, never mind. So that that looks fine now. <laughs> um, so we have the UI, you have the money. This is gonna have uh, this is gonna be another type of currency that we have for upgrades. Uh, let's put a laser here. Uh, oh, this is uh, we have to put another one here. Yeah. I have to figure out why, why the tower is blue. This is getting insane. I have no idea why the tower is blue. I have to look into this. But anyway, we have this. We have the UI. It works. It looks great. Um, yeah, and then we have this uh, this editor for for upgrades. I mean, not editor, but uh, uh, a debug viewer for all the all the values you you set up in the in the inspector. You can see. Uh, how they change over time in case you have this infinite level checked here. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna stop the stream here and we're gonna continue working on this uh, next week, um, uh, Saturday again. <laughs> I'm starting to lose my voice. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, thanks for being here and see you next uh, next Saturday. Have a have a great time. Bye bye.